sorry I'm late. What's, uh, let's see, who's here? Uh, Liza and Whisper and Mike. I should get the big magic mirror thing like Romper Room. And I see Jeanette and Sean Sneed and Debbie D. I see you too. Whisper to me and Margot K. How you doing? And I see, I Galby, I've already seen you. Um, let's see here. You guys are chatting it up in here, I guess. Larky, I see you. And... Oh gosh, Nicole, I see you too. And I see Scooter and Danielle and Sharon. I see Linda and GB. Kevin Leonard. Okay, and let's get the elephant out of the room. The paddle was not found today. But we did make an interesting tool. And I don't know if you saw it, Mike. Jimmy said you would be very proud of me if that put that uh, tool we that was the second tool first he used the rake hi Angie Jones hi Juju bees hi Chris Ree and uh, the rake with that grappling thing but then I said why don't we use he brought this big coat rack okay here and I said no we're not gonna use that coat rack I need that coat rack he, you know he, he so he's like we'll get another coat rack I'm like Jimmy come on so um, we got a stick and I took the four wire hangers and made hooks. But Mike, we, by the time we got there, it was um, like seven o'clock. By the time we got everything made the second time because we had to pick Ethan up, it was seven o'clock. And uh, we got a lot of seaweed, but that was about it. So... That's that's about the size of it. But he said Mike would be very proud of this tool you made. And then he came after I twisted the stuff on. He tightened it. Then I duct taped it. Then he put a screw through it. And then he put the um, this uh, like squeegee thing to hold it on. And then he drilled it into the conduit. But then what did we do? Then I sat in the kayak. The only thing that's really a pain in the neck, Mike, is that the conduit is so stiff that when I try to hold it in the kayak and paddle, it's very difficult because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't really let you go out and then you've got to let it go out and then you can see it go down and then he pulls it in. But it was, um, for a salad. Yeah. If somebody ate that, but I don't know, but I, the, my neighbor said it was good fertilizer, but so that's, that's the whole thing. We didn't get the, paddle and that's about the size of that so what is it everyone oh you can't see the crafting yeah and i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna finish my little ornament after this but i'm just gonna go over the true crime headlines and get that out of the y but yeah we had we had a fun day even so building that was fun i guess it was a bonding experience I felt like Jimmy and I were little kids, like, you know, with little kids and you make this thing, you said, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. And then like my neighbor who came and tried to help us because I grew up with him, I did like really crazy things. I put all the life jackets of my friends and I, as many as we could and jump in and he would come by and see us because we're like, oh my gosh, Chris saw us doing that. So yeah. So it kind of felt like we were little kids again and we were building this tool and we're going to find it. We're going to find it. I thought we would. But we didn't, Mike. We didn't. Maybe we will. I don't know. Okay, so Courtney Clenny was charged with stabbing her boyfriend to death, and she got no bond. We talked about this last night. This is the Instagram model that goes by the name of, um, I think it's Courtney Taylor is what her, her name that she uses on Instagram is, and she is accused of stabbing to death her boyfriend, 27-year-old Christian Obamselli. So she was in court Saturday, and her attorneys argued that there was no probable cause to charge their client with second-degree murder, saying that detectives cherry-picked the text messages, but they said no, she didn't get any bail, and she's still in jail. Hey, that rhymed. So, yep, she's still in jail. No bail. Okay, and let's see what else we have here. 
A North Carolina woman was arrested at the hospital for killing two toddlers. What the freak? Lady. Okay. Uh-oh. Who's coming in? Okay. So, let's see. We have a North Carolina woman has been arrested and charged with felony murder in the deaths of two toddlers on Saturday. Arrest warrants say that Lenise Shanique Battle, 29, killed the two little girls. And there were a two-year-old and a three-year-old. The rally police arrested her at the Duke Rally Hospital on Sunday morning. The warrants did not say how the two little girls were killed or define the relationship between Lenise and the toddlers. She has a court appearance on Monday tomorrow, okay? And let's see here what's going on now. Okay, now, um, what is this one now? Three dead in a string of random, okay, so there was a string of random shootings on Detroit's west side. You're not anywhere near there, right, uh, Sharon? Hope not. No, I'm not. I okay. know where it is. Oh, okay. All right. So three random shootings over there. Um, let's see what it says. Uh, Detroit police have arrested a man they say is suspected in a string of random shootings that terrorized the city's west side early Sunday morning. Four people were shot, three of them fatally, between 4.45 a.m. and 7.10 a.m. Investigators released a still photograph from the surveillance video about the man they showing the man they believe was responsible, describe him in his late 20s or 30s and about five foot eight. Shortly before 7 p.m., they announced that the man they were looking for had been taken into custody. Detroit police James White said the first victim, a 40-year-old woman, was found with multiple gunshot wounds at 4.45 a.m. She later died while police were on the scene. A witness found a 28-year-old man dead with multiple gunshot wounds not too far away. And then, at about 6.50 a.m., the body of another woman in her 40s was found, again with multiple gunshot wounds. She had been waiting for a bus a few blocks east of the other two shootings. And 20 minutes later, a man walking his dog was shot when he saw someone peering into vehicles and told him to get away again. Just a few blocks away, he was reportedly in serious condition. White said investigators believe the shootings were random. None of the victims were robbed. Investigators took the suspect into custody in the same general area as the shootings. Wow, so what the heck was he shooting them for? Just for fun? Wow, okay, and then there's a 12-year-old boy missing. Um, and what is he missing in Louisiana? Let's see. Louisiana State Police issued an endangered missing child advisory for 12-year-old Trinez Johnson, last seen at his home in Keithville. Johnson is described as five foot nine, 150 pounds, with short black hair and brown eyes. It's not known what he was wearing or what direction he may have gone. State police ask anyone with information to call Detective Dennis Williams with the Caddo Paris Sheriff's Office, 318-675-2170, or call 911. Hopefully he's found. Well, well, maybe he just went somewhere. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, college football store shot by shot and killed by his roommate. A Missouri college football player was shot and killed this week by his off-campus roommate. Torrance Evans, a senior, was an offensive lineman for the Central Methodist University Eagles. And Kadarius Taylor, 23, was charged with first degree murder in the Thursday night shooting in Fayette about a block off campus. Classes were canceled for Friday at the school while counselors and clergy were available for students and staff. The football team opted to go ahead with its scheduled season opener on Saturday. The team held a moment of silence in honor of their fallen teammate and a group of students held a fundraiser outside the entrance to raise money for funeral expenses. According to court documents, Taylor told investigators that he and Evans hadn't been getting along for more than a month and that he felt that Evans disrespected him on several occasions and on the day of the shooting, Taylor and Evans 
Taylor said Evans was making verbal requests and demands of him and refused to stop when asked to wait. Taylor said he took a handgun from his backpack and told Evans to stop and fired the weapon when Evans advanced on him. Taylor said he shot Evans a second time as well, either as he was falling or after he was on the ground. Howard County Prosecuting Attorney Deborah Reichoff charged Taylor with first-degree murder on Friday afternoon. Taylor fa faces life without parole or the death penalty if convicted. Reichoff said her office had not been had not determined if it would seek the death penalty. Taylor is due for arraignment on Tuesday. He's currently being held without bond. And it was said that Evans and Taylor were from Memphis, Tennessee, and the CMU Vice President for Enrollment Management and Athletics, Joe Parisi, said that Taylor was a former student who was trying to return to school. Let's see, here's another problem with an eviction. Uh oh, there we go. So let's see, this is when three people killed. Oh, this is this is the one. This is the one that okay. Recently evicted tenant sets fire to lure residents out, opens fire with shotgun. A recently evicted tenant set several fires at an apartment building in a mixed industrial residential area of southwest Houston early Sunday and then opened fire on tenants. Oh, this is a different one. But this people got, oh my gosh, the other one was in Arizona. Then opened fire on tenants as they fled the building. The shooter, who has not yet been identified, killed three people and wounded two others before a police officer spotted him armed with a shotgun and fatally shot him. Firefighters on scene to battle the blaze were forced to take cover when the shooting started, but none of them were wounded. Police say they weren't certain if the gunman was actually firing at them. 65-year-old on-site manager who had worked at the property for 33 years was one of the people killed. And the other manager was killed in the other one. They said the suspect had lived in the building since 2013, hadn't been paying the rent. He turned in his keys on Saturday after being evicted. The landlord also said that it appears 10 units in the building are completely uninhabitable. In addition to the property manager, the other two victims were men, one in his 60s and one in his 40s. One of the wounded people was taken to the hospital for treatment. The other did not require a medical transport. The manager's dog was also reportedly hit by gunfire but hasn't been located. Oh no, hope they find him okay. Houston Police Chief Troy Finer said the officer who shot the gunman should be put on administrative leave pending an investigation into the shooting. Our officer arrived, took action, and for that I'm very proud of him. Finer said he's a seven-year veteran out of the South Gessner Division. A neighbor told the Houston Chronicle that the gunman had colon cancer had no job and was behind on his rent. Something must have just hit him in the last couple of days really hard to where he just didn't care, said Robin Ahrens. So that's the second time an eviction where people are killed. Crazy. Um, well, let's see what this woman did. This might be a funny story. I don't know. This woman dances through her sobriety test. A Florida woman tried a few dance moves, specifically ballet and Irish folk dances. Hey, Carol Lucy. To get out of DUI earlier this year, it didn't work. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office released the video Friday of 38-year-old Amy Harrington's attempts to take a roadside sobriety test after she rear-ended another vehicle just a mile from her home on April 27th. Arresting documents say that Harrington had bloodshot, watery, and glassy eyes, dilated pupils when the deputies arrived on the scene, and that she struggled to follow instructions, and that she was unsteady on her feet, almost falling when asked to walk a straight line. See. The body camera footage shows one deputy asking Harrington if she wants to pay attention so I can give you the instructions. Yeah, well, you sound like my ballet coach, Harrington replies before taking a few steps on the line and performing a ballet sequence. That wasn't the exercise I was demonstrating, the deputy explains. And Harrington launches into a hybrid 
ballet, Irish folk dance. She even sways and twirls and tosses her long hair for good measure. The sheriff's office and Harrington later said later that Harrington refused testing the second time she'd done so, having refused a sobriety test before on March 3rd of 2019. They didn't say if she danced for deputies on that date. Okay, then let's see here. Um, deputies say they found a white foam cup with a light yellow liquid in Harrington's center cup holder. It smelled of alcohol. They charged her with driving under the influence with property damage, violation of an open container law, and the refusal to submit to testing, according to court records. She's scheduled for a pretrial hearing on Tuesday. Okay, well, she was trying her dance moves. Okay. Uh, Here's another one. Set fire to a group of homes. Is this Yep, that's the same guy. Oh, let's see. Okay, so we have Jimmy. I don't think Jimmy's there on that TV is so loud. A family gathering in Atlanta turned deadly Sunday, Saturday night when a domestic situation arose and a child was shot to death. Shortly after 10 p.m., a seven-year-old girl was shot at least once inside an apartment unit in the Camden Vantage Apartments. And Deputy Chief Charles Hampton Jr. said that uh, the apartment along with Jackson Street is in the old Fourth Ward neighborhood in the northeast part of the city. Hampton said that there was some sort of domestic situation involving multiple adults and that the dispute evolved into gunfire. First responders rushed the little girl to the local hospital, but she was already dead as a result of the gunshot wound. What we know this far in this investigation is that there was a domestic incident that escalated. And during that escalation, we know that there was an exchange of gunfire. And during this exchange of gunfire, that's when our victim was hit. Police have not arrested any suspects in connection with the shooting. Some of the people attending the gathering reportedly left the scene following the gunfire, including a male. Investigators are working to understand what involvement, if any, he may have had in the shooting. Any death is tragic, Hampton said during the press conference. But when there is a child involved, it really hits home. Authorities are asking anyone with information about what happened to call Crime Stoppers at 404-577-TIPS. That's really sad. Okay. Buffalo Bills punter Matt Areza has been released from the team following allegations that he arred 18 girl last year. Areza, 22, is one of three men accused of gang arring the high school student at a Halloween party in 2021 when he was a student at San Diego University. The victim alleges in a lawsuit that was filed this week that she and Areza had intimate relations outside of a house party when she was 17 years old, and that is under California's age of consent. The lawsuit further accuses Arasia of bringing the girl to a bedroom in the house where two other men aired her multiple times. The lawsuit alleges that piercings in the girl's ears, belly button, and nose were removed during the episode and that she was left bleeding from her private area. The civil lawsuit accuses the three men of R, gender, violence, and false imprisonment. Meanwhile, police are still conducting a criminal investigation into what happened. In a statement, Arasia acknowledges an incident occurred, but he denied the allegations. The facts of the incident are not what they are portrayed in the lawsuit or in the press, he said. I look forward to quickly setting the record straight. His lawyer, Carrie Armstrong, was more specific in denying the attack, and she said, I 100% do not believe that he ever forcibly arred this girl or 
had sex with her while she was passed out or drunk or anything like that. It's unfortunate that she's filed a civil lawsuit. I think it's a cash grab. Arasia was held out of the uh, out of the Bills the Bills final preseason uh, pre game on Friday. The Bills general manager Brendan Bean said that the team is taking what it believes is responsible action. With the information available, we have tried to be thorough and thoughtful and not to rush to judgment. And I wouldn't say it. It's, and I would say it's not easy. You're trying to put facts around a legal situation, sometimes with limited information. He said at a press conference on Saturday, he added, our culture in Buffalo is more important than winning football games. Okay. Okay, we went over there. We did that one. We already got that. Um, okay, what is this one? We got, we already went over that. There was one other thing here. Let me see if I, um, this one. So there is a blood test because, hold on, let me put her picture up. Okay. In Denison, Texas, a new Texas law would require any driver who causes serious bodily injury or kills a pedestrian to have their blood screened for drugs or alcohol is going to go into effect on September 1st. John Palmer, whose wife Katie, a Denison school teacher, was killed by a driver in April of last year, and she's been a fierce supporter of the bill. Even traveling down to Austin on two separate occasions to meet with every lawmaker in the House of Representatives. I don't want to say that it feels like a sense of accomplishment because we still have a whole lot more to do. It's validation. Knowing what we were fighting for is just and right because what happened last April was not right. John Palmer and his wife Katie were hit by a driver. Corey Foster on a walk in their neighborhood on the morning of April 21st of 2020. Katie was killed and John broke his back. Body cam footage from the scene shows troopers noting the strong smell of alcohol on Foster's breath, but his blood was never tested. An overwhelming majority of the representatives I spoke to were shocked that this had happened, but even more shocked than that it wasn't already a law, Palmer said. Representative Reggie Smith was a co-author for the House Bill 558, now law, and said that he couldn't be happier for the Palmer family. A lot of times, someone like this, something like this does not get passed the first time around. Usually it takes a couple, maybe three sessions to get it done, in my experience, and this is just incredible. Smith said Texas is a better place because of Palmer's efforts in lobbying to get this bill to become a law. I wanted to be able to look back on everything I did that my family's done and that our friends have done as well. Again, to know that we have nothing left on our table, table Palmer said. We give everything we possibly could give. Palmer said this law will now hold people accountable. The bill was common sense. It's, it'll be a good law and should have already been a law, Palmer said. If you have drugs or alcohol in your system and you are found to be legally intoxicated or impaired, you will be held accountable. The criminal case against Corey Foster was brought to a grand jury twice where they declined to indict him both times. The Palmers have a lawsuit pending against Foster in civil court. Why would he be? I don't know. I get it. Huh. On this sound, this is crazy. <sighs> South Carolina man was doing some target practice Saturday evening. He shot and killed a neighbor who was standing in her kitchen. Nicholas Schuyler Lucas, 30 years old. He looks a lot older than 30. Has been charged with involuntary manslaughter and shooting under the influence in the death of 42-year-old Keisha Luxwan Lucille Tate. 
The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office was called to the scene at around 6.30 p.m. where they found Tate unresponsive with gunshot wounds. Her family told the county coroner that she had multiple gunshot wounds and she had been looking out of her kitchen window when the bullet struck her chest. Deputies investigated into the night and eventually took Lucas into custody just before 3 a.m. This is a senseless death that could have been avoided had the gun owner been responsible and chose a safer place to target practice. It is a mind-blowing that a person thinks it's all right to target practice or discharge a gun within a close proximity to so many other homes in a neighborhood. Unfortunately, it's not against the law to be stupid or our jails would be even more crowded. Our community needs to lift this victim's family and her children up in prayer as they deal with this tragic loss. Oh, gosh. Okay, I think we've got all that done. And now I'm going to show you... Um, Hold on, let me bring the people. Let me bring the people back. Who do we have on panel tonight? Let's see. Um, why can't I make you all appear? Oh, there we go. How's the cottage cheese? Oh, you know, that was not as good as it was supposed to be. Yeah. I have a now though. What? You have what? I have a thing of it here in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. But um, I just wanted to say hi to everybody in the chat and then I have to hang up only because Dave has the TV going so loud and it'll But really wait a minute, I want to show you my craft. Oh, I want to see. Well, definitely. just wait a second. I'm going to get it. Oh, well, yeah, I will. Okay. Hold on. You gotta wait for the craft. Come on. Oh, I will. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> to see what it is. Yeah, what was wrong with your cottage cheese scooter? Come here, you can chop cottage cheese. I took it. I took two. Um, you know that black emery board thing I have? And I kept it, you know, of course, the whole way. With ice, I kept them cold, but it didn't matter because it's still like broken down to be regular kind of cheese. They were so good. They were so good. You know? Let me show Is this homemade scooter, homemade cottage cheese, or what? No, it's called, it's Michigan brand. Oh, no, it's Michigan brand. It's really good. Oh, yeah, but she, you were not happy with it at the thing. Okay, so this is what it was like when I got called out about the dive team there. That was not really there, Jimmy. And now I'm going to just quickly, this was with the iron method. And it's on the Ooh. wood. Okay. And now what I'm going to do. <gasps> what is that? Fun? What is that? It's the <gasps> wood that Jimmy cut and I, and I put a napkin on it and I did the iron method. And now I'm going to trim it with the thing and it's going to make an ornament. Oh, okay. Don't you love it? Hey, Eva. Or you could make it a coaster too, if you didn't want to make it an ornament. And when you, when I do this, you could then put the, the waterproof stuff on there and make it a coaster. I saw you iron that earlier, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, That's Jimmy's magic. getting me the, Yeah. Have you been working it, on anything, Scooter? Um, you have any of your radioactive yes. shells right there? Oh, let me show. Let me show. Them. Oh yeah, okay. show us your radioactive shells. I want to see. Yes, yes. we'd like to see your radioactive shells. Radioactive. <laughs> Scooter said that her shells are radioactive. Wow. They are glowing. She said, and they're very dangerous shells. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Maybe she should bleach them. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Will that take away the radioactivity? I don't know. <laughs> she said that maybe because remember down in the one island they were supposed to be testing stuff out in World War Two or something. She thought that maybe it included nuclear weapons. Oh gosh. And that they were glowing. And I said, I don't think so. I haven't seen any of my shells glowing. 
Where did Scooter go? She went to go get the glowing radioactive shells. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's see this. this. All right, let me let me spotlight you so we can see them. Hold on, I'm gonna spotlight you. We should be able to see them without that. Whoa. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Scooter, wait. Let me spotlight you. Hold on, let me take myself and remove the spotlight. Okay, now wait a second. Well, Scooter, wait a second. I don't see them glowing. Hold on. It goes slow. I, it's not dark enough. I, Let me see. Okay. Shut the light. Then can be Shut careful. the light. <laughs> Poor Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. The lights have to go out. Okay, I now. Wait. I don't see it. Glowing. Scooter. I think you have a glaze on those and they're just like shiny. They look nice. They don't look radioactive. Oh, let's turn the other way. What's that spike? Well, she put a napkin on that one. I think they just look like they're varnished, Scooter. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they look nice. They don't look radioactive. I'm, I wouldn't be scared oh, my, of... Oh, they're glowing a little bit there. Let right? me see. But that's I think that's little. because she varnished it, maybe. She's got a... Do you have a napkin on that one? Yeah, that one has a napkin. Yeah, well, that's the... like right. sometimes <laughs> algae glows. Look, yeah, algae, right? Radioactive yeah. plankton, like yeah, it might just be a little algae. It's not radioactive. Yeah. You don't have to throw them out of the house. No, it's <laughs> algae. No, three ships. <laughs> call the local news, Scooter. Please call the local news. Lady has radioactive shells. Yeah. They might yeah. yellow tape your house. I wouldn't yeah, do that. maybe. Is that maybe. a cat? Is that a cat? Oh, it is. It's a cat. It's owl. Oh, oh. Well, owls and cats look a lot. Yeah, I don't see any. Does uh, does does the, does the chat see any radioactiveness in this? I yes. don't, but I think they're beautiful. No, I don't see any radioactiveness. Hi, Carol, Lucy. Yeah, it's not showing. Hi, Moonlight, up. Marcy. Oh. How are you? Hi, Mike. Uh, you're all. We're all. You're okay, Scooter. I really. You don't. We don't see any cause for alarm. Radio well, girl, okay. Scooter. Yeah, Moonlight. Yeah. Right. It's all good. I tried yeah, to see Dave. Can I talk to Dave? Do you think these are radioactive? It's not an alpha bird of some kind. He doesn't. Oh. Dave. 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 Do you think the shells are radioactive? I can't hear. What is coming in? Oh, okay. Oh. But they're oh, awesome. Cottage cheese. I want to show you in full. Oh, okay. No. Oh, what are oh, you that's doing? It's cottage cheese. Dave's behind you, Scooter. It's the yeah. best cheese ever. What? <gasps> it looks. I good. can't get that here, though. In okay. Massachusetts. I believe you. It looks good. Dave, Can do you order? believe these shells are radioactive? It's Michigan brand. It's Dave, really don't be scared of me. I'm, it's okay. Do you believe Hi, the shells are radioactive, Dave? Did you hear Do you think the shells are radioactive of scooters? Yeah. You do think they are radioactive, Dave? Yes. Okay. <laughs> put them in the dirt. Oh say it, Dave. <laughs> Dave, just say, put them in the dirt. No. You don't think it's an algae, Dave? He's going back to his show. I like this. Yeah. Look at, he's like, what the hell is she saying? Okay, because I can't even understand her. It's like radioactive. What, of course, now he's what, laughing. What the hell is she saying? I'm not okay. going to say they're radioactive. I'm not going to say they're radioactive. I told her yeah. to put him in the dirt. <laughs> so, just to watch Yeah, look in the carts out there. In the cart out there. Look in the cart out there. Come here. I want you to hear. This is how rumor gets spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do Just you can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Dave? <laughs> In this video. You know they're not radioactive. You know you know what she says. There's no way. There's no way they're radioactive? What was that? Oh. No, it could be glow in the dark paint. Yes. Oh, Scooter. No. <laughs> Come on. Did you really do that whole thing? You should never believe Debbie. Whatever she says, she'll never believe her. Really? I'll never believe her. She told me you were very scared, Dave. 
I told her you were real scared about it and telling me not to mess with them and what. That's what you do, though. You <laughs> Oh my gosh, Scooter. That was all fake, Scooter. You guys know Carolyn looked it up and everything. And what if I had it? thrown all of my shells out? What if what I if, believed you, Scooter? Can you imagine I if I did you. that? If I did something I don't like that and I got rid of minute. them all, brought them to the dump, and threw them away? Oh my I goodness. Her look at her shells. She's like, I have them all in bags out in the deck. I said, Did you ever look at them at night? <laughs> oh my no. God. No. And I sent something to Scooter about like the shells that might look like they glow in the dark and because they've been marked. <laughs> because they marked Thank them God. to keep track of them. Yes. That's, that's oh awful. my gosh, Scooter. If I would have known that, I would have told you I got rid of all my shells and how it killed me to do it and see if you would feel really bad. Scooter house now oh my god <laughs> yeah, what day was garbage day so she could come get them yeah and it killed me i even gave away my little bird one. Oh, and happy wedding day to perido thinking of my bird one oh, oh yes happy wedding day Perido. she can spend all of her husband's money now Scooter. she's officially hitched yes she'll she be buying she can spend all of now. his money now freely right yes yes yep Peridot, you can buy whatever you want now. You got all of his money yeah. now. Uh -huh. Just keep spending it. Spend yeah. It. I live for my husband's paydays. Well, they're going <laughs> to use the haters are going to use that. No, it's a joke. Hi, where's the Lerve? How Thank are you? you Hi, where's the Lerve? How are you doing? Hi, where's the Lerve? Where's the Lerve? Where's the Louvre? Where it's Louvre. Louvre. Oh my! Remember that song till the end of time. Tammy's sending me more shells. I know she oh, had to eat a bunch. Of I shells. know. I, I know she is. And I, I even said, like, did you? If you, if they were a radioactive, I don't think she'd be asking me for more. Exactly. Well, Tammy, but you don't understand. She was telling me she thought it was just the South Carolina shells. That were radioactive because I said, "Are they Tammy shells? Do you think?" And she said, "No, nope, nope. They're the ones from South Carolina. Oh yeah, my radioactive the ones we got from the trip." She mm. said that they were glowing at night, and that Dave said that you better be very so careful. Funny, though, right? <laughs> Remember, I said, "Have you noticed anything about your shells?" And they're like, "No, why?" I go, "Do any of yours happen to glow?" <laughs> <laughs> that's awful wow i would have freaked out and she's like what you're kidding you're kidding Scooter. come on you're kidding. <laughs> i wouldn't have believed she really had me freaked a little bit out uh, linda i asked jimmy i'm like is there any way these would be radioactive or something she said they did nuclear tests out there and oh that, my goodness yeah and then I, they, but there is some, there is some truth to where? that they did do like a bunch of this trainings with um, somewhere in the carolinas yeah in the carolinas the they did trainings on this island it was botany bay I, really are you there. for real oh for yeah, real 100 percent. you have to look it up but it wasn't and nuclear you me that, yeah you sent me that article and i'm looking at it and I'm dang it i couldn't really get her she kind of got me right here oh hi jujubees you know? jamala patrick hi jujubees well, in nuclear training, are they really using real nukes? No, they're not nuclear. No, no, uh, Linda. It was back like in World War II, I think it was. And they were, yeah, they were, yeah. or maybe before that. It might even have been before that. And then some people would find these really old bullets and stuff. But you're not allowed to take anything from Botany Bay Island. Really? So that's why no, you, can't you can't take, take them from there. From Botany Bay. You can't take that's any right. shells or anything. Everything must stay exactly the way it is. Okay. That's what, you did say that on well, occasion. Bother. We can't take anything back. I uh, no, just on Botany Bay. Yes, that's it. On Botany Bay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I didn't know why. That's crazy. Because they want it to be exactly the way it was. They don't want it touched at all. Huh. I love your shells, Tammy. They're actually my favorite. Really? I would like. Can I want to see one of Tammy's shells and keep setting them. What? Can I see? Can I see one of Tammy's? Yeah. Show her one of Tammy's shelves. Yeah, I want to see because I might 
you know, you never know. I might want to buy some. Just come on the trip, and then you can get your own. I know. I'm going to. But I, I, my kids like to decoupage as well. We're going back well. again, Nicole. I know I'm coming this time. Are you really this time? Yes, I am. I promise. I'm not going to, you know. Is Alicia I, coming? I hope so. Stop and get me. Okay. Are you going to be driving down, Nicole? I don't know. Am I might. Why Stop do you need a ride? Get me, Nicole. Well, Sharon's going to be flying in to drive with me, and Danielle might be coming. I might fly and get a rental. Yay, Danielle. That's a thousand dollars a week. I'd rethink that. I rethought it already. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be cheaper. Oh, Tammy. Let's I'm gonna get with you, Tammy, in a bit. Tammy, you're gonna be leaving a lot of oysters. Those are cool. Yeah, I'm gonna place Tammy's an order. Tammy's gonna be floating. She's going to eat so many oysters for all these shells. <laughs> <laughs> Those are nice. Those are beautiful. Those are beautiful. It's like a leopard. Hi, Nancy. Oh, damn me. I'm going to need an order. They're kind of flatter than the normal. They, they, I they, like they, that. They're flatter, but they're nice for ornament ones if you want them very light. Yeah. yeah. Or if like you want to do, you could do one of those uh, wind chimes, can't you, with it? Yeah, and you yeah. can also do the Santa faces if you want to, yeah. Deborah Vancouverton has one made you out of them. Get the Dremel them. out and see if you can drill them. A minor, a I have a water. bunch of... I will. Yeah. I'm going to buy some Tammy. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let you guys go, and I'm going to be watching in chat. Why are you going so fast? You said you wanted to be up on panel. I was, but I don't want the TV bothering you guys. Nobody's you don't bothering. You hear the TV. I don't hear the TV. He's got his TV so loud. You hear that, and he's down in the basement. Can you stay for 20 more minutes or you could just take your camera off and just talk and just do your other stuff? Oh, I'll just hang up. Yeah. I'll hang Hi, out. Eva. Just stay, stay with us, Scooter. We you don't have to be, be on here. camera. Who is Alicia Cruz? She's new. She just came in tonight. Oh, hi, Alicia hi. Cruz. How are you? Hello, Alicia. Hi, Alicia Cruz. Welcome. Hi, don't forget to hit the like. Hi, Rough and Ready. Hi, Ruff. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hi, Ruff and Ready. We Scooter's I've trying to entertain up, her man. I've missed you being <laughs> up here, Scooter. Why? It looks like a piranha mouth. That's I said, I've missed you being up here. See, Me too. Debbie D's missed you. Oh, yeah, I missed you. Uh -huh. Hi, Alicia Bisso. Hi, Denise Bisso. Milk. Hi, Alicia. You guys know I just don't do well with a lot of people because I can never hear a lot of people wear like on the right. panel she gets yeah nervous. because yeah, we talk over fright. each other I've always been that way you know so I, yeah like I'm like that too because sometimes I might like uh, okay everybody one at a time <laughs> one at a time one at a time I get like you scooter yeah it's so funny sometimes at night you see this it's, it's hysterical Three people go to talk at the same time and they all go, they all say the same thing and then they all take back for a minute and they wait like exactly two seconds and the three of them go at it again, all at the same time. And then they, they you see which one is going to win out, right? Because then eventually one of them is just going to keep talking. So then they take it back a minute again, three of them go again and then somebody usually just keeps talking and wins. <laughs> I stop after the that, first in time. In that little break, I try to say something, and then boom, here they go. Yeah, yeah. It's so <laughs> funny because you hear it, and you go like this. I wonder who's going to win this time. Oh. <laughs> I say it quick like that. <laughs> in between everything. And yeah. then Kevin always forgets. Like, if Kevin is one of those people, and he gets talked over twice, he always forgets what he was going to say. Nobody, like, he never finished. Like, he doesn't get his chance unless somebody says... Kevin was trying to say something. <laughs> he, he, he so it's me. It's like Kevin. Kevin's going to Kevin. Me. It's like Let's Kevin, Kevin fight for your chance. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I even catch myself, even if I'm muted and doing something else, I catch myself going, shh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like y'all can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then sometimes, hey, sometimes I'm like just sit, trying to sit, and I'm like, I must be on mute. I'm like, no, I'm not on mute. They just don't hear a word I'm saying. Because <laughs> I really think I'm on mute. I go, oh, that's because I must be on mute. <laughs> but I'm not. Did you find Oh, me? I am. I, I am for a long really? time. Oh, oh, by accident. Is there like a very, very fine piece of sandbag? Uh, um, poor Kevin. Yeah, he can't get a word in. Hi, Ruff. Not at all. Did I already say hi to you, Ruff? Hi, Ruff, again. Hi, Ruff. Hi, my jujubes again. My chat keeps going out. Bad signal. Carol, I can't believe you said that. <gasps> what? I'm joking. I was trying to be like Scooter, but it didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Robin, Bob, I can't believe you said that. I'm not as good at it. That's okay. I'm almost done with that. Just... You spooled me. <gasps> okay, so there it I is. Then there, there it is. I really like that. And now I can figure out if, you know, you want to make it a coaster, you could just do the waterproof or if you drill a little hole, you can make it an ornament. And then you could yeah. do, you could do the back, you could shellac it naturally. You could put a, uh, the year on with your cricket, or you could put mm -hmm. something on the back if you wanted to, another design on the back. I can't see. Can we hide? it? Will I you can't see. see. I'll highlight. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Hi, Bunny Darling. Ooh, that's the Sorry. iron one that you did. It took that's two seconds. That's what I was doing today. And then the back right now is plain, but I'm going to do something with it. I'm either going to put the dates and, or, you know. I'm at Christmas World. Yeah, and that would be really nice. Like if that was somebody's first Christmas in a new house, that would be, yeah. Yeah, that would be our first Christmas. Yeah. You could do that with your cricket, first Christmas in a new house, and put the year and their names. That's right, Choo Choo. Nobody ever takes the place of Scooter, I agree. There so, is only one Scooter. Nobody puts There can only be one. Corner. Nobody <laughs> puts Scooter in the corner, no. right? So, yeah, that's, that, this is, but Jimmy just has to find a way to, to cut them faster. Huh. <laughs> no, just cut these faster. Hi, Mark. Hi, Captain. Captain, what's wrong with Captain? She's in pain. Hi, Captain. Wait, wait. Oh, no, she's going on a cruise. What do you mean? Wait, she's in pain. What's going no, on? She failed. She failed. <gasps> oh, no. No, what? where? The Dollar Tree. Oh, <gasps> oh, no. You fell at the Dollar Tree? Captain. How? Outside. To oh, whoever no. I remember somebody told me they fell. Remember they fell in the, was it, Nan somebody fell in the Dollar Tree. And they said the doors were like going over them. I forget who that was. Oh, I'm, I'm so I know sorry. Um, Siki, Slick, uh, Suki. Oh, Suki. Yeah, we're, hi, Suki. Hi, Suki. Hi, Suki. Hi, Suki. You're not here, but we love you. Wonder what happened to Suki. She came back a little bit ago, and then she said she had a lot going on, and then I haven't seen her anywhere since. But Suki, All right. come on back and see us. Come back. You better be okay. So, for Captain Lee Fam, what's going on? Did you break anything? When is her cruise? Two weeks? I know. I think uh, not no, even. Not like even. Three not days even. she leaves. Three days? Yes. She was leaving in a couple days. I oh, know my that. gosh, Please Captain Friday. Lee Fan. You forgot the sidewalk step. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> Pay attention. Be careful. Oh, that would be dreadful if she couldn't go. She's been... You hit oh, with my go. left foot, Not went down forward, and rolled on my right side. And what, and what happened? Suki was here yesterday, Kevin? That's yeah. crazy. Really? Hi, Suki. Yeah. Hi, Suki. Hi, Suki. Hi. <laughs> she was here. Cross-eyed Betty. Come on. So what's up with that? 
Dingbat, come on. Where's my girls? Hi, Rob. Captain. Um, did, I hate what that did, she What fell. did she hurt? She just colored her hair and everything. She's all she said. Oh, she's going to go, but. I would have yeah, to, she would have to be on life support not to go, she said. Oh, okay, okay, good. She's yeah, going. Really. She's going. She's going. She's going. So I'd no broken bones or anything, right? <laughs> That's good. You, I was worried she couldn't go. Are you Scooter, choking you okay? on the cottage cheese, Scooter? No, I'm not eating anything. <laughs> okay. Copy. I'm going on a cruise. I would be okay. She's going. She's going. She's Nothing's going to stop her. She's going. Just stay home, Captain. No way. Stay how here. Long no, is your, no, for long now. Is until the cruise. cruise for? How long is your cruise for, Captain? A week. A week. Yeah, stay home until you go to the cruise is what I mean. Not stay home from the cruise. Stay home until you go. But Carol, Lucy, I saw Dingbat in here yesterday. And then I said, cross-eyed Betty, come out, come out. And she came out right then, too. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Brazil. Hi, hi Nancy. Are hi, you not falling? Are you, Dan Nancy? No, Nancy's got good eyes now. Better, yes. Oh my goodness! Your whole, whole upper right, right hip. I have a. I had a big bruise on my thigh, and my kid said, "What happened?" I said, "Oh, you know me. I, I probably ran into the end of a table. I do that all the time, and I bruise like crazy. So it looks like, my gosh, mm -hmm. what the heck? And it's just I bruise like a crazy person." My medicine does the same for me, Carolyn, and I look awful. Oh and it gosh, wasn't even a big like, deal. <laughs> I'm like, I had this mm -hmm. huge, but they clear up pretty quick, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they clear up really quick, but I'll, I'll always, like, if I hit the edge of the dishwasher, I go, oh, that's going to leave a bruise. I um, call it hit by an ugly stick, and I don't know where it happened. Yeah, I hit the edge of the table with my thigh. I, oh, boy. And when I got leave. back from our trip, I looked like I'd been beaten. Mm. Oh, yeah, you were pretty beaten up. You were you beaten were. up. You was. Yeah. You work with Sharon. <laughs> she, she sounds like me. I fall all the time. I do. Do you? I do. I fell and I uh, sprained my ankle. Remember when I sprained my ankle yeah, and I got yeah. my knee? And I got all those pebbles in there. They came out eventually. Well, you can't. Well, mm. you got, if you go to the beach house with us and we get the same house, it's a lot of stairs. and you. Uh, I'm going to walk up them. I don't care if I you, fall. I fall. It's on me. But, yeah, but we well, don't want to fall break an, a leg or something. I'll well, go to the hospital, get casted up and come right there. You were walking thank around you, yelling you. for your son? Was he there? Or you were on the phone? Oh, poor captain. Poor captain. I'm sorry. I... Captain, my captain, captain, my captain. Yeah, I just said that. I just said that. Uh, I call her that. I said, captain, my captain. Oh, my captain. I said it first. I, Cap captain Lee knows I was, she was there when I said it. Oh, well, okay. That's copyrighted. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Why can't I ever be first? I'm <laughs> all right. We'll let you be first this time. Here, look. Be kind. Yes. Yeah. I got a mute. I got a mute. I'm cackling. I'm cackling. Oh, we got to get our, our inspirational saying up. Oh, what do you mean? Our inspiration out of our box. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Let Sharon be first. Every no. day is another chance to become the person you want to be. Oh. See? Yeah. You yeah. don't have to be bitter. You can be the person you want to be. Tomorrow's your next chance. That's true. It's and nice. Make the most of it. That's right. Five minutes from now is your next chance. Be a better person. Oh, right yeah. now. Be the person you Why want to be. Well, yeah. you got to think about your messed up. Then you gotta, you know, get better. I guess it does take some thought, Linda. You're right. Mm -hmm. You were embarrassed and in pain. Yeah, it is embarrassing to fall in public. Yes. You always feel like such a jerk. 
even if like if something wasn't your fault either like like say if, like something that you felt you still feel like a big jerk when you fall <laughs> i blame it on the purse the purse pulled me forward <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I, yeah, I'm good. Now. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Thank you. Um, that that those things to print out. Um, don't get right? embarrassed for falling. I wish I lived closer. But everybody I feels feel embarrassed for falling. I think. You can't help that. I, I don't care. I've fallen. What's the worst fall you've ever had? When the mirror whacked my head. Mine yeah, was one, my yeah. But that really wasn't a fall. That was... Oh, I fell. It pushed me right into the ground. Yeah, but and wouldn't I, you, wouldn't you consider fell. that, like, that? the fall was, like, as a result of something falling on your head. That was, like, the worst thing happening to you that mm -hmm. fell on you. Like, yeah, something falling on you. It fell on you. Well, I put my arms out to break my fall and tore both my rotator cuffs at the same time. <laughs> Yikes. So, yeah, yeah, that was a bad fall. What's my worst fall? That was a bad fall. My worst, my worst Mine, fall, I had my accident. You busted it open. You fell where? Remember? Oh, well, it was your breast implant. Yes, yes. Oh. I'm sorry. And right on that one on, that was on, being good. Oh, you, you fell on, right a, up. on a gravel road, wasn't it? Right out here. In, yes, right on this road. I'm sorry. Right I'm cringing. I'm sorry. Uh, you fell on your implant? Yes. I'm sorry. I had just had it, you know, put into where they were going to start rebuilding it. Right. But, yeah. And so they had to end up taking it out, and I didn't want to go through it again. So I'm like, uh-uh. I'm not mm -mm. coming back for it. No, I did. Like, no. You know? So wait, yeah. when you fell on it, it exploded? Well, yeah. inside. <gasps> Luke, but yeah. what did you do? Oh Didn't you have to get it taken out? It was saline. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, saline, yeah. But you went and got it yeah. taken out. Oh, yeah, definitely, yes. The I don't know why I think, you know, I have you mixed up with the lady on Phil Donahue. Do you remember that lady that took uh, out her own breast implants? Yes, I Phil Donahue yeah. was always oh, in my house. Yes, and... Um, <laughs> I don't know why I think this, that you fell on the gravel and something split and you took it out yourself. No, no, but no. my phone fell out. You know, I had drains on both sides from yeah. the slowly. Yeah. And one of those fell out when I fell as well. Yeah, but uh, remember when the uh, people were getting those implants and they had that like... um almost had foam on them and, the and they were showing like that. how it deteriorated inside people's bodies. Yeah. yeah, and people were getting really sick because the stuff was 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 getting through other parts of their bodies. And there was one lady, and she came on Phil Donahue, and she cut. She was so sick and so freaked out when she saw the reports on that that she went in the bathroom and cut them out herself. I saw that. Yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Don't you remember the 80s, all the, early the pictures 90s. they were showing when people were getting implants just for like cosmetic reasons? The pain. Oh god. And they they were almost covered. It looked like with almost like a foam, like they weren't see through. They had something on them, and that that foam foamy stuff was deteriorating. Mm -mm. Oh. And it was causing well, them to get this kind of sickness, and and it was. Uh, some kind of sickness and the, the the woman was so sick and in so much pain she went into the bathroom and cut them out herself was it to was it shot toxic shock let syndrome, me see what or was i'll it look sepsis? it up right now no it I'll wasn't toxic shock that's from tampons yeah the rate right uh yeah no that's from tampons people were getting that the yeah. rayon or whatever what they were made out of yeah it was the absorbency they were they were too strong. Mm -hmm. Captain, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. I, we could all say a prayer for Captain, you know. Yes, it Definitely. was 1992. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah. in uh, Austin, Texas. And it says that um, Marlene Hooker was so distraught over her silicone, they were silicone gels, 
implants that she slashed her own breasts open to force surgeons to remove them. I thought if I started it, someone would finish it. She got her wish. After 24 hours, after she cut her open her left breast, Dr. Richard Parker, an Austin plastic surgeon, removed her implants in a two-hour operation. I'm so relieved it's unreal. She said afterward from the hospital room where officials say she was in stable condition. I feel like a burden has been lifted. Earlier this year, the Food and Drug Administration restricted the use of implants because of health and safety concerns. Ms. Hooker, 46, became the second woman in the United States to cut herself in an effort to remove the controversial implants. In both cases, the women said their insurance companies had refused to pay for the removal of them. Ms. Hooker had been ill since 1989 with joint pain, fatigue, chest pain, shortness of breath, and she said she was told by her doctors that her muscles and nerves were deteriorating because of her implants. She went to Breckenridge Hospital Tuesday after awakening with a swollen face and a rash. When nurses in the emergency room told her the implants could not be removed there, Ms. Hooker said she took a scalpel off the table, went to a bathroom, and lacerated her left breast. I had to do it several times. I didn't realize I was so tough. She said officials at Breckenridge refused to admit her for surgery despite her wounds, so she found her mother and went to Seton, where she was admitted. Larry B. saw uh, Brecken's, uh, Breckenridge spokesman said that Ms. Hooker was not refused treatment. Gary Owen, who helped organize the Austin Silicone Implant Support Team, said that he was shocked by Ms. Hooker's action, but not surprised. These people are scared. Obviously, they're scared or they wouldn't slash themselves open. Yeah, so those silicone ones, they were deteriorating. Maybe she was, like, numb. Maybe the breast became numb after they inserted all that in there. Somehow the nerves got cut off and they're, they're numb. They're not I don't know. I don't have them, but. Well, there was another lady in 2018. It says desperate mom tried to cut out her own F cup breast implants using a craft knife because she couldn't afford the removal operation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But the lady on Donahue, he actually let her cut those off on. On her, on no, his, uh, no, no, she was in a no. story. No, she did. She went to the bathroom at her house and cut. Yeah, it was yeah. at home, and she went on there to tell her story. I thought you meant uh, at the bathroom with Donahue. No, no, no. no. Mm -mm. They would have had to get somebody to get her if she yeah, was doing that. Was... <laughs> the condition yes. cleanliness would have been a concern. Oh yeah, but I remember they would always show them and they look like they had the way Learn they to love yourself no matter how they look. Come on. Right. Right. That's horrible. Well, well, all of us, you know, do things to make ourselves pretty and it hurts. It's not worth it. Okay. We can do illusions to make it look like they're there or anything's not there. What they were gonna do with me, the plan was to inject saline, you know, so much at a time. Right. Yeah. Skin, you know. What yeah, skin I, I got. Yeah. yeah. But we never got far. I'm sorry that happened, Scooter. Oh, that's okay, Nicole. I'm just thinking about it over and over. You know, once you tell a story, it's you <laughs> that's scary. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Ruff. It is scary. Oh, her phone is dying. Okay, Rob. So that was Scooter's worst fall, so we didn't finish. Danielle, what was your worst fall? Oh, I know what her worst fall was. The one with the, the dog in the bed, yeah. right? The dog in the bed. No, the dog in the pool. No, the dog in the yard. It's the dog in the yard that messed up her knee. By the pool. Right. Yeah, by the pool. Oh, by the pool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some of the grass in the yard. Yeah. I thought it happened in the hallway with the dog. No, right. No, by the pool. That was Nancy. Remember? Nancy dug her dog bone. She fell over the dog bone in the hallway and fell. Oh. Did who remember wait, I like out of a trivia question. Who oh, okay. don't say it, Sharon? Who remembers what Sharon 
fell mm -hmm. on when she fell in her bedroom. I know, but I won't say it. <laughs> I remember. I know. We, this is Nicole, and I know, and I wasn't there, but I know. Chad, I know. see if you remember what Sharon fell on when she fell in her bedroom. Hi, Rhonda. This is an MRB trivia question. What did Sharon mm -hmm. fall on? It hurt, too. Hi, Marianne from TD. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Marianne. Okay, so let's see what they put. What they put? I'm going to um, mute. We're going to see. I the answer, but I'll mute. Twice, Nancy. She said she fell over the dog bone. Twice. Oh my goodness, Nancy. Oh my I'll God. tell you a funny story about my sister-in-law. Remind me. Okay. Oh yes, Kevin got it. Yay, Kevin! Got Nail polish. Remover. Bottle remover. Yeah. Nail remover. I thought you fell on the nail polish bottle. Uh-uh. Nail polish the remover. remover. And it was about eight inches high, and it went right in the right in my back. Oh, oh my, my goodness, Sharon. Yes. What? And um, I fell shortly after that. Remember, Sharon? I fell in my bedroom, and I came down on the night table, and I had like a big bruise over here or something. Yeah. yeah. Was a little bit after Copy you, Sharon. <laughs> so I'll fit right in. I'll fit right in then. If everybody else I'm is out of the, in the bedroom in front of you, Carolyn. <sighs> what happened? When I whacked my head. Oh, yeah, I, I that was bad. Yeah, that was off. scary. That was scary because I turned my back for a minute. And I'm, like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, what the heck? I couldn't even, I couldn't. It knocked the wind out of me. Yeah, and then we, they told you you had the, the United States on your forehead. Yeah. And you're like, oh, really? Where's Florida? Over here. <laughs> Did I say where's Florida? Yeah, you're really? like, is Florida? Or, yeah, Florida's over there. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, it looked like a map on oh. her head. She kept, they kept saying, you, 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 you told me that. Kevin, Cheryl and say to Kevin, Cheryl and Phil. What happened? I don't know. Didn't we put you to bed? No, then watch Kevin no we didn't put her to bed. We gave her ice and stuff. De Debbie yeah. D, what was the worst fall that you had? Let Danielle explain hers, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You just <laughs> scooted right over. Okay, I can't I wake thought, her okay up. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. It's okay. <laughs> you know. Go to Danielle. Oh, my God. Stop it. So what's the fall, Danielle? What's the fall? Weren't you here? You guys were all Explain here. Explain it for the new people, people that didn't hear it. I don't know. Okay, well, it was just a, it was my um, husband's friend's dog. They came over, and um, I felt bad he was out there, you know, they, just alone with the kids. So I went out there, and the dog was running around the pool, and just one of the one of the laps that this giant dog was running just hit me on the side, just took me out. Just mm -hmm. completely took me out and just tore everything inside my knee like I was made of paper. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that was the long and then recovery. You live how long in your bedroom? That was, that was horrible. That happens in October. It happened like October 17th. I didn't have the um, surgery till December. And I couldn't, I couldn't like, I, it was starting to heal, but it was healing wrong. So I was like limping, but I really couldn't walk well. And then after I had the surgery, I couldn't walk at all because right. I couldn't put any pressure on it at all, or I would have undid everything he attached and fixed. Oh, and you had to live how long in your bedroom? I don't know, forever. I think it was, um. Months. Yeah, I think it was like, yeah. I was able Maybe like I was getting like a, a lot better March and April. I was so much better. Now, Danielle, when it happened, I still have never understood the way you said your knee was bent. Like, I um, like I, I was hit from the side and my knee bent. Like I was hit on the outside of my body, on the side of my body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On my right leg on the outside of it. And I, I was hit like a like uh, like a car hit me on the train. Yeah. And my my knee went completely, you know, left. Like the the way that your knee doesn't bend, like, well, completely left, like the opposite, like the way the oh. dog ran into me. And you and know my when you hit your knee and it hurts, like it feels like you shattered. Oh. Did you have that feeling? 
Oh no! All I felt was just pain, but I hit the floor, and I went to get up, and then my body was just like, nope, and I went right back down, like like in like a like I looked like a frog at that point. I went back down. I went, oh my god, this is so bad. And then like they had to come out, and well, my husband came out, and then him and his friend they had to carry me in to the living room, and then they just got me ice, and it was just. Ice forever until I went for oh. X-rays, and then I had I had the X-ray was like, no, it's not broken. I'm like, okay, but something is wrong. Like you know what I mean? Like this isn't normal. Uh. And so then, like I had to go get um, an MRI, and then that took weeks because it was a specialist, and everyone that was like right at the brink of of uh, you know of the pandemic. It was yeah, in 2020. Right. Mm. That, that was in October of 2020. Weren't the tendons all torn and everything? Oh, every my my um. Marianne Fantini remembers. Yeah, like my MC, like the MCL, and that was yeah. just completely like apart, like the big one that on this completely apart. My other one was torn. Um, everything was just completely ripped apart. Mm. It wasn't like oh. there was a pair; it could heal. It, it was just apart. What kind of dog was it? Um, he doesn't know, but it, 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 excuse me, it's like a lab, but I don't know. It looked like a lab and a Rottweiler, like, mixed together. But, you know, I mean, it's just a um, giant, very muscular, huge dog. Mm. Very giant, big dog. And you're a small person, too, so that probably hit you pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it, it was so out of, like, oh, God. It was like I was hit with a car. Yeah, it's insane. Like everyone's. Oh, how did you know that Danielle's a little person? Yeah, <laughs> because she she Who told said like that? her. No, like it's like wood. like Can't small, fall. like yeah, like not small. That. Not little, not, no, not a little, a little person, person, but like. <laughs> Danielle, you're what? Three it foot. Was a, did you guys um, all know Danielle is very little? <laughs> well, I didn't know she was a little person, and I, you know, I didn't mean her. <laughs> she is. Did you all know Danielle was a little person? Yeah, I'm three feet. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, you know what? So we don't good, judge. Danielle. We it, love it doesn't you. doesn't matter. She has a new I'm reality just glad TV you're show okay. coming out. She has. <laughs> the Little Housewives. Can you imagine if they had a show, The Little Housewives of New Jersey? Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> they do I'd have watch those, it. Yeah, they do remember. But no, no, the Little do. Housewives of little, New Jersey. The Little Housewives. The little. The they all have to be little, little Housewives. Kevin yeah. is the Little Housewives, but they have the New York <laughs> ones. I know, California. but they have to be little people. We're the little people. I always. They watched. were little people. Yeah, I watched them or I did. Yes, but I mean all just like the housewives of New Jersey, but all oh, little people. people in New Jersey. Yes, that and was the basis of the here. show. Really? No. 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 I never heard of them. No. They're housewives. No, it wasn't. Yes. No. <laughs> Look at them with the mini wives. And the mini wives. <laughs> the mini wives. <laughs> the mini wives of New Jersey. That would be like a good infomercial. You know, I traded in the old wife and I got me a mini wife. <laughs> she's she's so much better. It, it fits all the what I'm talking about, right? There's Tara. Um, there's those couple of Nicole's. A lot of them are so, a lot of those women are so freaking mean. They are tough. Yeah, I we're talking mean. about mini wives. Yeah, these are little people. Need little people. Little. How come they don't call little people mini people? Mini yeah. You guys know what I'm talking. I'll look them up and show you. I know what you're talking about, Scooter, because I watched yeah. it. Yeah. What, what, what is that? That the, the, what do they actually call those? Those something? What housewives of New Jersey? The what housewives? The real house. The real mini housewives. housewives. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, the real housewives. The yeah. real mini housewives of New Jersey. Any, they're all the real. Yeah, but housewives. little people. Look at that Fisher Price. They don't get in trouble for calling little people little people. Well, they were that first. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then there was a group in Atlanta. 
Yes, yes. But that what those were the called? real housewives. But I'm talking about if they were really, if they found a whole bunch of little housewives. Caroline, that's what we're talking about. They were I never really heard of that. Scooter. They were, they were, oh, full, they were average size. Any of them. No, they weren't, oh, Carolyn. No. There was many people wives. Are but you were kidding me, Linda? No, they, no. Yeah. Oh, they're kidding. Little no, women. I think they're kidding. No, there were not. Oh, you guys are such jerks. I'm sure they're on there. I'll, I'll look like, that up. You are kidding oh, me. They are. No, they they were no not. little people oh, wives. They had children no, I, and everything. I, I, yes, but they weren't little people housewives. Yes, yes they were. I, no, uh, it was those people that lived in that Oregon uh, farm. No. no. They weren't in Oregon. They were in L.A. and Atlanta. Oh, it's mm. called like somebody oh, come said. Come on, it was there called. are no little people. Really, housewives? Little, little people yeah. of L. A. is what it's called. Kevin. I said. wish I could make it up. I'd make a fortune. Oh, Little Women, oh. L. A. Yes, yeah. Little Women in Atlanta and Little Women in Texas. Is it? There's oh my of- gosh, you're freaking right. Yes, <laughs> that's I great. I think we had an original idea. I did too. No. Oh my I, gosh. It says, we know sure. what you're thinking. Is there really any premise about a group of women that hasn't been done yet in reality TV? You've got your real housewives, you've got your mob wives, you've got your dance moms. And then can there possibly be anything new? Look no further than the Little Women LA, which is not a modern retelling of Louisa May Alcott's coming of age classic about the March sisters set in City of Angels, but a new docu-series following the trials and tribulations of a group of girlfriends who happen to all have dwarfism. And it is, of course, not easy living in a world where most things aren't tailored for your body type. And this new series, which premieres on Lifetime Tuesday night, makes no bones about it. But the six women on the show, Brianna Manson, Christy McGuinty, Elena Gant, Terry Joel, Tanya Banks, and Tracy Harrison don't want your sympathy. In fact, the early previews of Little Women LA, it seems like they will focus on how beautiful and kick-ass these women are, regardless of their hardships. Now, yeah. Carol's been on for years, and little Minnie, she died. Remember, Linda, did you know Minnie died? Yeah, No, I didn't, but Elena was from Russia. Yeah. Who is yep. Minnie? I don't yeah. see an, I don't see one named Minnie. Yeah, Minnie on Little Women Atlanta. Oh. Uh, Minnie- oh, that's right. The, yes, I know who you're talking about. Yes. She was in a car wreck. She was her mother's only child. You really yeah. watch this, Scooter? Oh, yeah. 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 Kevin yeah. says the little blonde Tara is the producer. Yeah, Tara. She does. She's the producer. She's one of the little women. She has two children now. Yeah, and hers are, what, the little girl Penny, she's, what, seven or something? Yeah, she had it. She has uh, dwarfism. But the little boy, he doesn't, does he? I don't don't think so. Are they married to little men? Yes. No no one's married to an average size man? Brianna had a boyfriend that was normal. Right, and we... um, Elena's husband was normal. Average size, they called him. Yeah, normal size. Yeah, size. Yeah. Carol's Carol said that Brianna's um, husband was cheating on her, and she wanted to know if Brianna had dumped him. Brianna's husband oh, was cheating on her. Oh, who cares? I probably. I probably. I have no idea. I can't believe little Minnie though. Here, this is her right here. Had she died? Car accident. Oh, and her no. mom, yeah. mom said that uh, she had her cell phone and was able to call her mom. And she died right there in the car. She she was off on the side of the road and just, at, you know, called her mom somehow. And all she said was, mom. And I think that was all she was able to say. And she died. Mm. Either mom, I love you or just mom. Oh, yeah. Tragic, tragic. Yes. Sad. She was speeding, they said. Yeah. They said she was flying down the highway. She oh. never should have been doing that. No, I feel like if you're a star, like anybody, even that golfer, should have had a, should have a driver. 
Yeah. So I should have a driver, Linda? I think they should. <laughs> they obviously didn't. But then as you said, if anybody, if you're a star, you should have a driver, right? <laughs> right. Carolyn well, needs a driver. I think you should have one too, Carolyn. Would I you should like get to a hire driver me? then because I'm very, very, Would you very... like to hire me? <laughs> you was will be my driver. driver. <laughs> I was a limo driver for seven years. Okay. All right. We could try it out and see how it works Long out. Long car Lincolns. Okay. We could try it out. We could try it out and see how it works out. You can look at any of the front of my car. So always perfect. Can I cut diamonds in the back while you're driving? You want to cut diamonds? But don't you remember that commercial where they had the guy cutting diamonds because the car handled so smoothly? Oh, um, I think I do. And then he was. Well, um, I drive like I don't want you to spill your wine on yourself, so I have a dry cleaning bill at the end of the night. Oh, and remember that other commercial? They go, "Here's your scalding hot tea, Grandma," uh -huh. and they give her the tea, and they get in the car. <laughs> and then that's because the car rides so smoothly. <laughs> that never drive with Jimmy and think you could cut diamonds or hold scalding hot tea. <laughs> it's not going to work out. <laughs> Jimmy is put lipstick on because it'll go you'll get one side right and no, then the rest of Jimmy it is like off. hold on yeah yeah oh my goodness Ron the black and I have a Maltese he was running away from the house into the street was chasing him trying to catch him and then she says I guess she fell and she hit where her heart was under the ribs right oh. on a sprinkler head oh. it knocked me out for a second and she had to go to the er oh i had that bad fall earlier this year remember when i messed up my side real bad yes yeah, that yeah that was bad and it didn't even seem like a bad fall but i twisted something and i wasn't bruised or anything but it just i did something that was bad you know we know you've had the worst falls <laughs> oh stop it <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat any of that. <laughs> no, it wasn't the worst fall ever, but it was just really painful. Oh. Now, well, the sweepstakes of falls, I might be the winner. What's your winner? What is it? I said one. The oh, the, the, the Tuesday morning one. Oh, that was the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't think I've heard any anything worse than that, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think it's a tie between her and Danielle. Danielle, yeah. What was Debbie D's worst fall? We didn't get to hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had a couple. <laughs> uh, which one's the worst now? You can only tell us about the worst one. The worst one. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out which. There's two. I don't know which one is the worst. Say both of them. Because um, I'm sure Carolyn will want to be one sure does. Kevin says we only we don't have mm -hmm. the budget for two falls, just one. Sooner, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't hear you. You have to repeat it. Well, Carolyn, I told Debbie to tell us both because I'm sure that you will one up her afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us, Debbie. Well, I don't know which one's the worst though. Both. Tell both. All right. Tell well, both. they're both short. I can oh, make no. them both short. All right. Um, this back when I was in my middle to late twenties, I was going to church and we were having a gathering potluck. So I had made a whole crock pot full of homemade chili. So I get there and I'm going up to the step, up the steps, and I slipped and fell. Oh. <sighs> I was Ooh. able to save three fourths of the chili, but the other part of it was all over me. Oh, that was you, more embarrassing than actually being hurt. You burn your? Oh, did yeah. you burn yourself? I know, but I, <laughs> I went into the women's bathroom and tried, tried to scrub out as much as I could and put my dress under a the hand dryer. To try it. Oh, it's not so that. So the, other one, the other one is um, a prior dog that I had. She was pretty big and she liked to jump up and I was trying to keep her from doing it. 
So I noticed she, she had, the way she did her body, I could tell when she was going to jump up and put her paws on me. So she did that, and I bowed my, my back to pull my stomach in to keep her from landing on me, and I was telling her no. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, as she, as she was going down, I moved my left foot, and at the same time, she caught my last two toes, and they went to the side of my foot, broke them, mm-hmm. and I was down in the oh. floor. Ugh. Yeah, so I had to call my friend. I just had to crawl on the floor because I couldn't get up. And the next morning, I called my friend. She helped me, took me to ER, and they just, yeah, I had to sit them. That's all oh, I Oh, my because, God. Yeah, it was horrible. I've never had anything like, I had my hip set, you know, because when, when I was in my car accident, it popped out of place. And, mm-hmm. you know, I was under, I was put under at that time, but I've never had anything set like that. And I can't imagine the pain. Oh, I can't. Yeah. It was, it was Nicole, bad. But... Scooter said we're not talking about car accidents. I know, I know. That's <laughs> the, I, then I don't have a bad fall. Then my well, well, then probably she when said I you lose your turn. Yeah, Scooter I've had so me. many. I don't know where to yeah, start. Linda's, yeah, Now we go to Linda's bad fall. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where to start. I don't know. Don't One know. second, Linda. Um, Carolyn, we're yeah. after Debbie's. Weren't you going to tell about how you were? Walking into a potluck carrying a big pan of beef stew. Yeah, beef stew. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was two pans of beef stew. And, and, a, jar. and a potato salad on yeah, top. Potato salad. Correct. <laughs> yeah, and a potato salad. Correct. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Linda. Uh, Linda. I lost my. I, I, there are too you. many to tell. I have none to tell. You don't have any that you can think of. No. Okay. <laughs> you lose your turn. Oh no. <laughs> I know how that feels, Linda. Don't worry. Scooter, I passed. Your scooter told hers. I told mine. Yeah. I think. Oh, well, go ahead. I really tried to look where I'm walking. Why I had a few bad falls. Well, tell us one of your falls, Carolyn. One one of my falls, when I came down from my stairs and I stepped onto the hardwood floor of the foyer and there was a hanger there. It was like an ice skate, a plastic hanger on a hardwood floor, right? And I Mm -hmm. stepped on it with my foot and I just started sailing across the the floor. And then I came right down on my tailbone so hard that... Mm. I broke my tailbone, okay, but I could not get off the floor. And my daughter's Holy Communion was like two days later. And I had to crawl. The kids were at my mother's house. I was home alone. I had to crawl into the kitchen, like on my side, to get the phone, to call my mother, to tell her that I fell and I couldn't get up. And then Mm -hmm. when I finally got up, I knew it. My sister said, don't you want to go to the hospital? I said, what are they going to do? They're going to x-ray my butt. I said, I'm not doing that. I oh my nothing. God. What are they going to do about my tailbone? I know I broke it. I can feel I broke it. So um, I remember what her Holy Communion and they had all the steps to the church like this. And oh no. every step I was like, oh, oh. I was like, oh, I was like, the horrible. Step out, oh, step out. Were you carrying a pot of anything? No. A pot of beef stew? <laughs> I was coming like out of the shower to go put something in the dryer or something. to do, And just, okay, oh my gosh. Okay, I have a tailbone issue. Okay. Um, You know the big plastic ball you buy your kids 25, 30 years ago that had the butterfly in it? Yeah. It yeah. would spin inside a big hard plastic right, ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they put it on the lap. They put it on my chair, and I turned around and didn't pay no attention and sat down on that ball, oh. and hurt my tailbone. And that afternoon, we had to go to Mount Vernon. <sighs> I didn't tour it. I sat outside looking at them. I said, "I can't move." Same thing. I didn't want to go to the hospital because what were they going to do gonna about do? it? What were they going to do? X-ray your butt and then you'd be like, sorry, you fractured your tailbone. You're not going to do anything about it. No. Well, they <laughs> That's what the people say. On you? They got their ass in a sling, right? People say that. Yeah, like, got I got my the ass. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know. 
No, <laughs> that's where the phrase that. or <laughs> Mount Vernon. That's where the phrase came from. Yeah, you can't accident. do that. Yeah. So you just have to suffer with it. So when I see one of those hard plastic butterflies at, at, at uh, antique stores, I saw my run. Oh, my goodness. That's Never PTSD. Never want to see one of those again. Major PTSD. I can't imagine. I missed my turn, so I guess we're done here. You missed your turn? Oh yeah, I remember I, I don't get a turn. Who's next? Wait, um, but you did tell your full story, didn't you? you? That no, angle? that... That doesn't count. That wasn't my worst one. Okay, was was the cool. sheetrock one. All right, go ahead. Uh, tell us your worst one. Wait, 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 I fell and I hit my head on the sheetrock. Now says no. No, wait. Um, Carolyn, will you read out what happened with Juju? With Juju. When she said, I got horse. pulled down a pier five months no, pregnant. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Oh, that one too, yes. And I broke Ooh, my right. tailbone. A drunken guy broke my three times. It's mush now. Oh, wow. <gasps> I broke says, mine twice, Juju. Yeah, she, Juju no, says, no, no, um, girl, and she says oh. right here, putting a halter on the horse. I what? had, when I was 17, he pulled his head up, and I went and back, went down, my, tore my rotator cuff, and it sounded like a canvas breaking. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Ooh. They can't do anything. I know they can't do anything for a broken tailbone. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get that out there before we lost it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, mine was just a sheetrock. I just hit my head really hard, and I, I was, and yeah, and you I hurt what, myself. You, my mother fell in this house um, shortly after it was built. And she fell in the foyer, and her head hit the uh, wall, and it left a little impression like that, okay? Mm. And I never wanted it repaired. It was my mother's yeah. head in that wall. And do you know, they, um, when we were, when, after, especially, at, that was when my mother was alive. I, I still wanted it there, because we used to always go, Mom, look at where the, because we, it was like, you could hardly notice it. it, was, it but anyway... Somebody, when they were repainting it, I wasn't here, right? Oh no! They repaired it. No, that's so a good. Pissed. That's a, you know, that's a memory of your mother. I you was know, so you wanted pissed. that there. I was so pissed. You should have left a post note. I know. Well, it's still there under the paint. Yeah, it's under there. You should have oh, left the post. I broke. I broke the sheetrock, so there's nothing to keep. You know, oh, with you my broke. head. Oh. Yeah, I have a hard that head. Juju said 17 hands tall horse. I'm and sorry. Uh, yeah, 17 hands. Me silly. That's how tall he was. Mm -hmm. There's no buck cast, as Rhonda Blackburn is correct. The bigger the that. horse, the better I like them. I love them. I, I fell off a horse once. I know that is a bad fall. I just fall a lot, so you I forget. Have to get right you know. back on the horse. No, you I never to. went on a horse riding again. My teacher would make us get right back up on the horse. Well, I had yeah. a concussion and I had to go to the hospital. Oh. So I couldn't. All right. I fell off the horse and it just started running, cantering, they call it. Weren't you wearing a hard uh, hat? I was wearing a helmet, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was thrown off all the horses a lot. But I, I was young, a, you know. Did you ever get a concussion scooter? No, I never did. Uh-uh. I was always lucky it landed on my butt. Shorty. And it right on my head. And I had a helmet. I still got a concussion. Got a okay. Liza, do you have a fall story? No, I've been pretty lucky, actually. <laughs> wow. So Not far, one? Touch wood. Not one. Oh, oh. I, don't know. I don't know. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. But I've never brought... I've never... I've never broken a bone in my body. Knock ever. on wood, please. Knock on wood, yeah. neither have I. Where you, well, yeah, I am, knock on except wood. for my tailbone and my wood. toes, but I mean, something that you could actually put in a chest. <laughs> oh, can everybody knock yeah. on wood real quick? Just take a moment. I knocked on wood. Um, All right. I'm going, I just went to the post office oh, and I'm going to the market. I wouldn't want you to do that to your okay. head. Do you have to get milk, Carol? Are you going to the store, Liza? Yeah, I've just been to the post office, and now I've just got to go to the chemist and the supermarket. Get some milk. You went to the post office? Yes. Yeah. Was everything good? Everyone's, 
Everything, yeah, everything was kosher, all good. Okay, good. good. Very good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Can you show us the, the Australian supermarket? Yeah. Yeah, I can show you the Australian supermarket. Mm. Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, what kind of snacks they have. Place. What kind of snacks. Yes. If they have any of the, the cottage cheese that Scooter likes. Mm. And how much is gasoline <laughs> there? Uh, our petrol at the moment is about two dollars a liter, two dollars Australian. Oh wow! Two dollars a yeah. liter—that's like a quart. Yes. A bigger than a quart. That's oh, like wow. what eight eight, eight gallons? gallons. A gallon. Eight dollars a gallon. Yeah. Whoa! I said eight gallons. I'm seeing wow. my brain. I sell too much. Okay. Yeah, it floats, but between like a dollar fifty to two dollars, it depends what's happening. Like, so you if it's a long buy weekend, they always put it up. You don't buy it. Yeah, by the leader. Yeah, wow. Carol Carolyn, Juju is willing to come visit you and bump the wall for you. I know she said that, but I wouldn't like you to do that to your head, Judy. That's really oh. nice. <laughs> that is kind, Juju. That's kind. But you don't want to do that. <laughs> mm. Oh, Juju. No. And she said that her oh, husband oh, fell no. twice, broke seven ribs once and ate. Another oh, and a collarbone the second time. Oh, oh my! And I have to okay, go to the chemist. Juju. Okay, Juju, I'm going to be doing that too, very soon. Oh, good night, Juju. After she finishes her cottage cheese. The chemist mm. is. The yeah. Oh, you're looking at the picture. Yeah. <laughs> I like that's better. I'm going to start calling the drugstore the chemist. I know. Yeah. Right? I know. I like yeah. to use their words. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to the chemist. I'm gonna have to go to the chemist. Like, you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> go to the chemist. Some people it. call it the pharmacy, but that's, yeah, the chemist. that's what we do here. We call it the pharmacy, but chemist yeah. sounds better. We like the word chemist better. Uh, chemist feels it, like a nice rolls off the top. Where's the nearest chemist? The chemist sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, it does. Is the chemist in? I have a question for the chemist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I have to, I'd like, I have to ring the chemist. Yeah, yeah. Seeing his daughter-in-law works at Rite Aid. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna talk to the chemist. <laughs> so I'm gonna change Walgreens. I bet he or she smiles. Can you connect me with the chemist? <laughs> what are the hours of the chemist? Do you have, do you have a chemist in store? I'm gonna be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the chemist sounds like Breaking fun. Bad. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> I've never watched Breaking Bad before. Really? It's a good yeah. show. STKFC. Yeah. Hi, Alicia. I just I saw it. Scooter, that was around That's the left. Time I even had a TV was Little Women. Really? Yeah. So it's been a long time since I've had a working TV. <laughs> that has been a long time. <laughs> a long time. So Rhonda says, then you go to to a biologist to get your tailbone checked out. Yeah. Tails a urologist. A biologist to get oh, your tailbone. So you you're, why does he care about my tailbone? <laughs> Well, I don't know why he would. No, he couldn't. No. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Hello. You didn't have to be so nice. Yeah. Mm, KFC sounds good right now. We would have liked you anyway. Yuck. Do you have Red Rooster in the U.S.? Red Rooster? No, but that sounds good. Yeah. We have Red Robin, yum. Robin, the grocery Red store. Rooster, they make chicken? Yeah, they make chicken, but like roast chicken and like roast potatoes like and corn and peas. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, Rusty chicken, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Red Rooster, Robin. Yeah. Red Rooster, that, that sounds like a nice. That Red, where is the nearest Red Rooster? Red Robin, we have. <laughs> Why is that down the street from me? There is a restaurant called the Red Rooster. Yeah, for I mean, years oh, really? You know what would be really cute? Does it have a red roof and a rooster on top of it? Yeah. 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 Does it? Yeah. It has yeah. a huge rooster. Wow, I just thought of that too. on my own. 
Well, that's like Red Roof Inn has the picture of that. Yeah, but they don't have a big rooster on the top. Well, no, without the rooster. Without the rooster, yeah. Well, it's not the same. And thing. people would call it the purple chicken. Where? <laughs> the red no, rooster. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you really have a red rooster there, Scooter? We really do, yes. Do yes, they make I chicken? Do they, they make chicken? Do you buy your roasted yeah. chickens at Costco super cheap. Rhonda, I've never been to a Costco in my life. I'm not kidding. The Costco's in Australia, they don't know how to cook chicken. They're cheap, but they're always raw. You have to put them in the oven and cook it raw from Costco. Oh, really? Boy. Really? Yeah. 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 It's gross. Ooh. Yeah. I'd rather pay more for one. Yeah. Yeah. That's not But good. that's here in Australia. Yeah. Uh, pass on that raw chicken. No, I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. thanks, guys. No raw chicken for me today. Maybe another day. Damn, fifteen dollars for a raw chicken. <laughs> now right. we get to go in the store. Can you highlight uh, Lisa? Yeah, Liza? is she in the school? Is she in the school? Almost. I'm just about to get Are out of the car. Ready to get out? Okay, here we go. Oh, no, I'm at the um, that supermarket. Yeah, we want to see the supermarket. <laughs> Uh, we want to see it all. Everyone knows. All right, let's go. I'll take it off me. I'll turn it around. All right. What are we going there we're going for, in the Liza? Supermarket. <laughs> well, what are we getting? Um, we're getting some dog food. Oh, but can we go down all the right. snack or cookie aisle? Yeah, yeah, we can go down a few aisles if you want. All right. I'm being Jeez, lazy. I normally like this cook for my cheese. dog. Cheese. Have a look at the cottage cheese. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, I'm excited wow. about this right now. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I okay. love this kind of thing. This is what we do when in members, if you guys, if you want to think about being a member, we go to stores, we, we take everybody, we sing, we do karaoke, we have a DJ. We go to the beach. That's we not go going to the beach, to thrifting, we go to yard right? Sales. Yeah. Look how close okay. you can go to the store. Let's yeah. see. Oh, well, look at the trolley, see? That's what you oh, call them. Do you call them the trolley? Buggy. A, a buggy. And we have half. I don't know if you guys have it. No, we call them trolleys and we have half. Trolley. Trolley. Yeah. See, I like this trolley. I always want to use that, but I forget. It's a wonderful yeah. trolley, Liza. Where are the trolleys? Get me a trolley. Kevin a trolley. said we need to see prices, Liza. Hello. Let's say prices. Welcome. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. The top of the morning have, here, yeah? That's a oh, No, you use a basket. I nice. want to see the... No, oh, the trolley. No, no basket. I want to see the pile pile. Let's oh, see wow, let's okay. See. Yeah, we want to see the, uh, the everything. Is this the bakery? Oh, like so this nothing. This looks very similar to ours. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah but they got a lot of space. Here. Now, so how much would shipping? What is a package of those muffins costing? And shipping. Um, One at a time. Three dollars seventy-five. Three seventy-five. Not bad. That's good. eighty-nine cents yeah. per one hundred. This is Woolworths. Grams. She's in Woolworths. No, she's not. Yes, yeah, she is. It just said Woolworths. They don't have these yeah. anymore in the in U.S. Woolworths. Oh, wow. yeah, they have Woolworths. Oh. Oh. This is this is wild. This is not like our used to be. This is not Woolworths didn't have such no, great bread. They didn't have this is must and this be, is like all the vegetables. Well, this oh, is look really at the cheap. Avo this is looks avocados. Like avocados are only yeah, one seventy. I thought you guys everything was so expensive over there. That's a, that's oh, very that's inexpensive. So far, things are things when they're things, people buy things when they're on special. So, how much are the strawberries how, there? Yeah, just for example, <laughs> uh, so they're on special for two dollars fifty, yeah, but they've been lately they've been like six dollars. Oh that's my great. goodness, oh, wow. that's a great deal! That's such a great deal. And, and, sh and shipping would oh, be well, what? they're small, okay, yeah, that's not so yeah. great. Eight no, of them there, yeah. something. 
Oh, oh that's tiny. I well, I'd eat all eight. Thing. You see, like, the raspberries have been $7.50. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's oh, all right. Raspberries are expensive here, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they are. Crazy. Yeah. We haven't had any romaine lettuce. Look at that. Oh, that's all the green stuff. Oh, look at the eggplant. That was nice. Uh, we have this like cheaper version of stuff. It's called the Odd Bunch. The Odd Bunch. So, the odd but those bunch. are the good ones. So they're like they're, they're like, they're like funny shaped. The funny shaped stuff and that. And they're a lot cheaper. Not, I've seen those here. We do have that. Two fifty a bag. Yeah. yeah, but in America they call it organic and um what heirloom, and they it's like ten dollars a bag. Mandarin oh, the odd bunch. No, but that's the not organic stuff. Is there organic stuff though, right? On a bunch. Oh, what did Debbie? That's I said. That's not U.S. dollar though. No, this is an um, Aussie dollar. So oh, right, but an oh. Aussie dollar is higher, so it, U.S. dollars even yeah, cheaper, yeah, right? Yeah. So, Ooh. wow, tomato it's really tomato. Okay. No, the Aussie dollar is worth less. But no, but yeah. if it's nine ninety, then it's in the U.S. dollars, it's much cheaper. And, and it's a kilogram, a not a pound. It's not per pound, it's yeah. a kilogram. Mm -hmm. So there's 2.2 pounds in a kilo, I think. Oh, my goodness, that's cheap. So that's for two and a half pounds. Look, divide that into two and then split it by what? Like 50%? That's, oh my goodness. So there's like, one, that's two, super three. cheap. There's about eight tomatoes in there. And then we have um, the delicatessen. So oh, there it is. Cool. This looks very similar to what we have. Yeah. Well, he does. He's not on the moon. Well, you know, sometimes when you go to a different country, everything looks so different. And it says 24, but don't forget, you divide it by two, and then you, that's for two and a half this pounds. This looks so similar to what we have. That's good, good deals on that. I tend to stay away from these How much is that shrimp? $29? It's square. Yeah. <laughs> That seems like a but lot. But you know what? How much? A pound? But you know what? It stays in a kilo. It, so two, it, two pounds. It's mm. okay. Look, I do the math, Carolyn. So it's twenty nine, um, twenty nine dollars for two and a half pounds. But divide that by two. Right. Too late for math, Nicole. We have no math. Stop putting. So math it would be yeah, what? It would be like, uh, like fifteen dollars. Uh, yeah. Kroger sells them for nine bucks a pound. Well, it would be fifteen dollars and buy two and a half pounds. Kroger sells for nine dollars a pound. They're not; they they stay in the freezer for like two years before they bring them out. It's like six bucks uh, a pound, five bucks. You really a pound. do just look at the store. It doesn't really look any different. Yeah, it looks very similar. Like uh, I thought we'd be wow. Yeah. And let's the brands. I I want to see the snack lab cookies. The snack on oh, right, let's go. You like the cookies. Like the biscuits. Alpha. Right. Um yeah, the biscuits. they're they're actually cheaper bird's eye. Than most. They have bird's eye there. Look at that. Yeah. Oh wow, bird's eye. Fish fillets. Fish fillets. Hmm. <clears throat> I have the meat department. <clears throat> wow, it looks like a Walmart or what yeah. I look like a Walmart. Yeah. All right, picky aisle. Uh, <laughs> I keep hearing fireworks or something. Oh, stop scaring us. <laughs> no, oh, I really do. Uh, oh, oh, in your house? Australian bread. What are those? Potato chips? Well, take us with no, you. No, they're like little little crackers. Like. Oh, oh. shape. Oh, I'll mm. try it. I like that. Chicken oh, crackers. I love crackers. Barbie yeah. Those are like the chicken Five crackers. Chicken. Oh, you know the chicken Salt crackers? And yes, chicken I do. What? Chicken, chicken biscuits. Chicken and a biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they have here. Yep. Chicken and a biscuit, right, Nicole? Yes. What? Yeah, that's a Cheese crack. Go to the cracker aisle. It's called chicken and a biscuit. They have chicken biscuit and they have... Um... This one, like this one, in a biscuit? Yes. I'm a but biscuit. But it doesn't look stick. like that. Stop it. Drumstick yeah. flame. I wouldn't buy any of that. It's good. No, it's good. 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 I think it's, is there uh, actual chicken in it though? 
No, no, no. It's, it's all no, flavor. There's no chips. No. It's just it's, yeah. Do they have digestives? Oh yeah, I eat digestive every morning. I'll show you. You do? Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, I have two with I a cup of tea in the morning. It. I never tried it. Oh, yeah, they're so good. They're delicious. Where can I find it? At an Aldi or something? Did you Aldi? have them, Scooter? Yes. Did I introduce they're you? They're on special. The Where do we find ones. those? Oh, look at that. That's good. The chocolate ones in the bottom are the my ones are my favorite. So the don't forget the, milk. the, the dark. Mouth. I don't see the dark. We don't have dark, but the milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yum. We have those and we have these. Ooh. Ooh I've never Ooh. seen those. Ooh. Okay, so should we really how not. much for that? <laughs> um, uh, you could find them on Amazon, maybe. Um, no, you know? they're going to be maybe. so expensive, Carolyn. I swear, everything well, is. And this is something you guys don't have, Tim Tams. Yeah, I've what is seen it? Tim Tams, but we don't have all those varieties. Nah. No. We've got, like, no. too many varieties. No. No one in Australia really likes them. And <laughs> Pims, do you have those Pims? What are no, not no, Pims. that's more. You know, no, they're not called Pims. There, they're called um, some, no, they're called oh my gosh, Jiffy Cakes. Oh, yeah, no. oh, yeah. no, um, Aldi sells them. Yeah, Aldi sells them. They're like the oh, orange. Look, oh, hobnobs, oh, hobnobs. Oh, yes, hobnobs. Yeah. They are so good. We don't have Alpha. those here. Hobnobs. <laughs> Alpha yeah. says that, and they Alpha have chocolate coated ones too. Yes, yes. Oh, hobnobs. Oh, my goodness. Minimum wage in Australia is twenty one thirty eight. dollars They're only $1.65 for a package of hobnobs? Yeah. $2.20. Oh, $2.20. Oh, hobnobs, yeah. Half yeah, price. you divide it by two oh, and for American. At, oh, that's crazy, hobnobs. And it's even cheaper than that, Carolyn, because you divide it by Oreos? two American. Oh, yeah. I have like all the Oreos. Oreos. Lemon are the best. Mmm. Do we opinion. have lemon? I don't know. Oreos. We have a lot of varieties. Oh, red but yeah, look at oh, Oreos. Okay. Those Oreos are one dollar and fifty cents divided by two. I've never heard of cinnamon Oreos. So Seventy-five cents each, right? We got red velvet, cinnamon, yeah. double chocolate, golden, and yeah. the original. Mm -hmm. That's oh. a deal. Uh, Fourteen dollars. Do you have over there? Do you have the Bosco? Chocolate? No, nah, we don't have a lot of varieties of chocolate syrup. Unless you go to like, um, I've got like the coffee and tea aisle. Unless you go to um, like specialty stores, you get nice stuff there. Right. Oh. So then you have tea milk. So we've basically got like Cotties, Home Brand. Ice magic. Ice magic. Oh, and, is that stuff that Chris Carter? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a lot of turkeys. So it's hard. Colties. You know it's what they hard. say? Colties. That's like 90 Day Fiance. Colty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I would always think of Colty with that. Colty. How much is the Hershey syrup? Five dollars divided by two is two fifty. No, but by three, Nicole, it's about a third. Oh, okay, third. Our thirty Australian dollars is about twenty US Hi, dollars. Hi, Tracy Claus. Wait a minute, it's more money for us? Yeah, Hi, no, Nicole. Nicole, Nicole are you spend... stuff. Hello, how are you? <laughs> you guys are absolutely cracking me up. Oh, really? I'm, I want to know the money. Con I need to know the money conversion, Carol. Nicole, if you spend um, $30 Australian dollars, that's 20 US dollars. Oh, or if you spend so like 10 Australian dollars, that's 7 US dollars. Okay, got you, got you. So it's like 30% off. It's a yeah. percentage. Yeah, to get the, to get to US dollars. Oh, look God. at the Look at the magazines, Vogue, <laughs> Bell. Yeah, so they'd be $6 American American. style. Look at that Hampton style over there. Wow, look at that 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 man there. I'm <laughs> I didn't look. I just got, you know, I ran There's my no eyes away. Yeah. My eyes went, no. Nah. Oh, lady died, lady died. <laughs> oh, Princess died. Yeah, lady died. Yeah. Yeah. I have that book, actually. Oh, because it's coming on the anniversary, right? Of yeah. 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 It's got, yeah. It's, um, and then the I always know it's before school started. And yeah, I think yeah. it's the 31st of August. The 31st, I, yeah, yeah, because it was around yeah, Labor Day. Yeah, I remember. Oh, look, Nutella. 
Oh, Nutella. Nutella. Ooh, what is that? What are those little gold packs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, look at that. They, yeah. They're like those. those mm, um, now I feel like some Nutella. Yeah. I would like some. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they only well, have Skippy. That's yeah. a new thing. We've, we always have getting thing? it. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. well, is that American? Either. I don't eat Skippy either. I just eat a plain brand. This is our one, our brand. This is our normal brand. Bega. Right. Bega. 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 I'm getting hungry now. I know. Know. I feel like that Nutella. I can Vegemite. Oh, yuck. Uh, How does anyone eat that? Yes. What is that? What How is this? That Vegemite? Vegemite. Good. It's absolutely it's like... disgusting. Well, what is it? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's, 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 it's like salt, isn't it? It's like a savory spread. It's very it's salty. Disgusting. So is you it put it like on a your bullion toes, but you gotta cube? know how to do it. Is it like a bullion Total. cube on bread? It's a very acquired Total. taste. It, it tastes like beef bread. stuff to me. It's a bullion cube on bread. Too much. You're not meant to put a lot on there. Just it's a just, drop of a bullion. Like, it tastes like Skittles. Like tastes the rainbow. Oh my god, your sweets are expensive. Taste the bullion. Oh, uh, gummy bears, caribou. I've got a lot of the same candies. Yeah, yeah I know. I thought I were going to see a lot of weird things that we never do saw. Do you have before. mamba? Mambas. Yeah, we have all that stuff here as well. I thought I saw mambas. I don't know. Wait, My kids love them. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, no, one of those pineapples. Congratulations on the big cookies. Yeah, y'all got a lot of the same oh, stuff. Here's the Cadbury's. Hi, Cat. Do you, do you have Cadbury's in America? Yes. Yeah. Not, not yes. what yeah. you have there. No. They're mm -hmm. around the same prices here now. Just take a third off. Look, the Milky Way. Uh, Tracy Claus, congratulations. What happened to Tracy? I said congratulations on the baby. Her, her daughter had a baby and she named her Ocean. Oh, so oh. You're, you're a grandma. Congratulations. congratulations. I was mm -hmm. trying to tell you that. Sorry, you weren't fast enough, Scooter. Congratulations, Tracy. Congratulations. I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's that was a joke. Yeah, right. Oh, no. Are you mad? Is she no. Caesars. Oh, my God. I really serious. got scared. Is, you're scaring the other shoppers. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> it's like the busy time, yeah? <laughs> Liza, how much was yeah, that Pringles? Coca Pringles, they have Pringles. Um, twenty-two seventy-five for a 30-pack. Uh, you know what? Oh, I wouldn't even know cool. we were in another country, would you yet? No. No, no, no I wouldn't know we were in another country. Other I feel like we're process. in the United States. Except for the yeah, right than the process, when, the when Alicia idea. took us in that convenience store, there were like brands we have never liked. It was never. Just like so yeah. freaky. Yeah, I it recognize cool. most of these yeah. as well. All the chips are, are the Doritos. same. Thing, a lot yeah, of them. it looks and everything Doritos. looks like us. Like I thought Americans had everything like in like we had such big things, but this looks just as big. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, when is someone going to come and visit me in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, they're all the, they're on the multiplex. Yeah, this looks just like us. Yeah. I can't Doritos. believe it. Mm -hmm. Doritos. We don't have Vegemite here, though. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're not, you're not missing yeah, anything. Yeah. Nobbies. Look at that. Nobbies. Salted. Oh, they look lovely. Nobbies. Nobbies. Nuts. <laughs> oh, a heart. Thank you. One Australian dollar is worth sixty nine US. Save the US Nobby cent. snacks. Save them. Yeah. yeah, just take a third off any price, and you get the US price. Yeah, a dollar is sixty nine cents American. So anything I in Australia. I thought Australia well, something was something so is a ten or a seven dollars. So Hi, heart made wise. Hi, heart made wise. Oh my God, Hi, heart made wise. <laughs> yeah, how much is the meat? Yeah, the, I, oh, yeah how much I want is the to meat. See. Fort Filet, 9-11. Wow. Well, that's all right for a fillet. Yeah. That's, that's six dollars American. Yeah. It's about half a kilo. Yeah, that's not right. They're yeah. We need to go there. Their yeah, prices are more than that. We've been making out like crazy over there. How much are the sirline steaks? That's why I asked her how much shipping would be, but boy, it would be uh, a lot. Sirline. Let's see if they have got any. We'd have her shopping for her. Oh there you go. Oh, there we go. The porterhouse. How much are those now? Twenty dollars for how many? How many is in that? Wait three. a minute. That's twenty dollars for three steaks. Yeah, and they're yeah. so Carolyn. Oh my gosh, that is so cheap. Yeah, it is. Really? 
Yes. What does the toad But wait, they don't wait, wait, look wait, like wait, Porterhouse because Porterhouse yeah. is supposed to have the, the, the no, other filet. The, they're sirloin. Yeah, they'd be about the same price here. Porterhouse has the filet and the sirloin. Yes. Yeah, but that's just the good part. The, the sirloin's a good yeah. part, isn't it? No, the sirloin is, is, has is, a the, the sirloin is the lovely. How, how much is the total price on that New York strip right there? Uh, it's they call it a here they call it a New York strip, but there they call it something what else. House style. It's on twenty-five, eighty. So oh, that is so. That is very inexpensive, and the meats That's are beautiful. That's very expensive for two steaks. They look oh, this lovely. Is like, Not here. This is like the good if you stuff. think that's how expensive, you need to come here to the U.S. Yeah. Here, wow. Look at how thick that is. Seriously, no. These prices are cheap compared to Look, and that's on sale 11 so it yeah, that's like good price that. it is like $8. It is so it's you couldn't even get that quality of meat here. Um, oh, really? Guys, uh, how much are those? No, how much are those? Look at the how much are the skinny, or how much are the um what you call it? Just just down below that? Just down, down a little. Yeah, right yeah, there. To the, the left. to the left. You know, God, my brain is gone. Everything over. you own in the box. Oh, the tea yeah. How much is the tea bone? Thirteen seventy for one. Mm, bit dear. That's about half a kilo. That's still cheap That's a bit for me. Dear now you'd pay about about eight euros for that, which would be eight dollars mm. for one. Oh, that's oh, yeah. It? Yeah, that's good. Are you kidding me? That is, I would like. That's the mince meat. Either. How much is that? Oh, the mince when's meat. The, See, I want to do the beef mince. I'm gonna, I need two pounds of beef mince. Yeah, how there much it is, is that right one? there, yeah. Carolyn? Uh, I'm in the portal, Liza. Oh, wow, that's expensive. That's wow, that's very expensive. Well, how yeah. many pounds yeah. is that? Well, there's a two whole lot of different mince meats that are um, got different yeah. amount of fats in them. Yeah, but like I, I, only, I only I only ever buy steak mince, and this the most in it is five percent fat. That is the cheapest yeah. I have ever seen. That I one's there got was... um eighteen percent fat. Not, they're not big packages, Nicole. They're, they're not. Cool. I'm going to have to bring you to an Irish supermarket. To, well, that the steak looked thick, Sharon. That was that. It looked really thick. But it was for one steak. Lamb. But that's yeah. Yeah. Lamb. Lamb. Like, what is that? A leg of lamb? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about the same price here now. Right. I can't that's even get that. Yeah, so they don't have leg of lamb just dollars. out. They have them only around. Yeah, they don't like have Easter a leg of lamb yeah. anywhere Easter out. Time. Well, you got to order the on your butcher. You have to order. But look at that. But you can't buy a leg of lamb like that. A whole leg of lamb just sitting there. Can you not go into a supermarket and buy that in no, America? No, no, no. Yeah, they don't either. have butchered. Oh they don't have so butchered. How do you get your roast for Sunday? Or they oh, you got to go. They have roast, yeah, the but not the leg of lamb. Your market, and if you drop look, look at you, streaky. You'll order it. Ew! Jeez, Our midwife said that Vegemite is made after from the brewer's seeds left on the bottom of the barrel after beer is they're, made. They're eggs come in ten packs, not twelve. Did you notice Yucky. that? The what? Yeah, eggs come in twelve. Oh, it looked like a ten pack. Yeah, they come in twelve. They're really small eggs. eggs. It's just a little longer <laughs> for the two more. How much for the eggs? How many things Liza. are in a baker's dozen? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, 12 eggs is $4.20. Yeah, that's about right. That's not bad. Yeah. Because that then in America, <laughs> it's cheaper. I mean, our dollar, U.S. dollar is cheaper. I don't know. Yeah. Tracy Klaus wants to hear Linda Gell's voice. And then we can get them Only medium, Linda. large, and extra large. I'm not saying anything. No, no Tracy Gell oh. wants to hear Linda. Just say, hello, I, this is Linda Gell. I think my... What? Just say, hi, this is Linda G. Uh, good evening. This is Linda G. Okay. <laughs> Did you catch it? No. Tracy, was that good enough? <laughs> My phone's going to die, guys, so I'm going to jump off. Uh -oh. oh, great. Okay. Thanks, oh, Liza. great. Oh, Thanks a lot, oh, Liza. Oh, no. Liza. I'm really Thank you, Liza. Really Liza. Really Thank you. Box. Come back later, okay? All right. Thank, Thank you. Hurry up and get to the store. Yeah, the bank offers probably that. There's crazy people on that phone. Can you hear Thanks a million, Liza. Thanks a lot, Liza. <laughs> Cara Lucy, it's your turn. Get to the store. Cara Lucy, get in the or, car. Or, oh, wait a minute. Or, um... Oh, Cara, I can't. Cat's First of all, my run. battery's nearly dead. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll get into a car. You're in Australia. Hurry up. Get to the store. Take us for a ride. 
I will. I'll plan it some morning. I will, I promise. But I, I, I'd like to go there really early, which is she when they us, open. So there's not many us, people around. Tell her. So I'll definitely Carol. do it someday, girls. Tell us what you did Good last plan. time where you took Pardon? us to the cemetery. Tell us tell us where you, what we saw when we, you took us last time when we went to the cemetery. Well, you what, do you, what do you mean, tell us? Weren't you there? <laughs> no, it wasn't live. It wasn't live, though. Like I know, but you were us. there. What do you mean? I know, the, the, for, I did for the chat. <laughs> For the yeah, I did it in the Zoom. No, I'm not. I'm not dressed now, Nicole. And no, I'm not... not now. Don't go. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, she took us to the cemetery. It's twenty to nine in the morning. I haven't slept yet. Yeah. And, Hello, and the, Tracy. How are you? It, it was beautiful cemetery. Not like oh, here. Thank you, Pat. Beautiful. Thank you. It is very well kept. They actually. decorate. They de You know, they come and they decorate the graves and they. Yeah, it's they are. It is. It is. It's really well kept. Yeah. yeah. Scooter, do you want to buy small eggs? For no. What? Small eggs. They don't care uh, small, do they? No. No. Aren't they medium, just... large, extra large, and jumbo? Right. Yeah, they have, yeah. They have Remember how they, they used to sell small eggs? Yes, legs? and you know what? Remember when cake mixes used to specify two large Making. eggs? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They, yes. Now they just say two eggs. You know that. Because yeah. They just use eggs. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. There was small egg Scooter, yes. There was. I yes. remember that. Large. Well, my Adams laid really tiny, beautiful eggs, so we would just use two if the recipe called for one, you know. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm suspicious of of the large eggs. I'm I'm sure they're giving something to the putting, no, the, I, putting something in the food. No, they're I get all large eggs. Some of them. Jumbo eggs, Carol, from the farm right down the street from my house. Yeah. And our, the chickens are free range. Them. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 The big chicken. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they're only but three you know the bucks. ones in the supermarkets, though. I'm suspicious of them because no, they're I don't buy battery hen eggs. And how Crazy the hell do they get Carolyn, the we're um, covering that uh, case now. I think it goes to court. When does Suitcase Lady go to court? Oh, uh, October 7th, I believe it is. Or November yeah, 7th. Well, Carolyn oh. will cover that in October. Mm -hmm. We forgot. Yeah. We're still and, live, are we? Voice. Oh <coughs> what? What, Carolyn? I forgot we're still live. I thought we were just in the Zoom. <laughs> no, no. We're, that's what it, you know, it feels like, though. Oh because we're God. always in the Zoom like this. That's, yeah. you know, and getting to know you ladies over the last month has just been wonderful. And I'm happy yeah, to be likewise, there. Nicole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll definitely do that during the week now. Nicole, every time you talk, I think of my cousin. You sound just like my cousin. Is she up here in in Mass? She's or around in here? She's here. She's oh. in Michigan. Oh, really? I should have her call you or you call her. You sure. Her I'll give you my... No kidding. She can call any time. It's just funny the way, you know, I want to call you by her name. That's okay. You okay. can. Maybe yeah. if, it's, if it's not weird, I don't know. No, it's I fine. just have to think about that you are not... Carol, her name's Carol, and you are Nicole. That's all. Nicole, and my middle name is Marie. Nicole Marie, and she's yeah. Carol Marie. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear that fly? <laughs> I, I heard it. Your door, I and there's a fly after it. coming in. <laughs> the answer is yes. I did hear it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I did, and I thought I was. It was me. It, like it was in no. my ear. No, I hope wow. it's a door. It's actually a lovely morning here, and a healthy fly. Carolyn, where are you? I, I was hate getting. Flies. I was putting away tomato sauce, and now I've got myself a piece of a kind bar. Hi, Lisa Hoban. How oh. are you? Hi, Lisa okay. Hoban. She just woke Hi, up and. She's getting ready for work, and she saw oh, that we were over. still alive. We read that. Morning, we haven't got to bed yet. We can see that. We read it. I have to get gasoline. You're right, Alicia. Thanks for reminding me. I I am on empty. I have to go How to the store. How much is your today. gasoline now, Nicole? Um, my gasoline. Has it come down? It's, it is. Yes, it's three ninety nine a gallon, and you save ten cents when you have the Cumberland Farms Smart Pay Rewards card. I don't work for them. Oh, Robin, uh, and Bob, and yes, your daughter gave Princess Di a posy of flowers. Oh, oh wow! Oh. oh. That's amazing. Did you get a picture wow. of that? 
I wonder if they did. Probs and many told me that before. Robbie told me that. Well, you're special. Yeah. <laughs> she told all of us in a chat, Carolyn. I didn't hear she it. Didn't Carolyn. remember it either. I didn't hear it. Yeah, I was told to say. Robert e. Bob says she said she smelled beautiful. Of course, her hippie mom never wore perfume and rarely deodorant. I'm not sure who we're taught who she's talking about. I don't well, know how that know. came up, but whatever. I have I don't I didn't know either. <laughs> I, I just I, I I just continued reading it like it couldn't I couldn't stop reading it and I just you know. Oh, Tracy, did you? I really liked your too. Hit the thumbs up, everyone. Don't forget. Right? Hit the thumbs up. And think I about becoming a member. Hi, Debbie S. Hi, Debbie S. Hi, Debbie S. Hi, Debbie S. Debbie S, do you recognize the person up on the top corner? <laughs> I don't know who's on the top corner. If every, me? If, if everybody's me? not familiar with the person in the top corner, just let us know. <laughs> we'll have her introduce herself. Me. No. <laughs> the, other, the other lady eating the cottage cheese. Oh, there. <laughs> if you don't remember or know who she is. She looks vaguely familiar. <laughs> I know. Yeah, a lot of people don't know who she is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, we have a lady that has the dog picture. Mm -hmm. What happened? We have Oh, the oh, lady that has the person. dog picture, yeah. Yeah, the little uh, Dotson. The little Dotson. Oh, Scooter wants to be spotlighted? Oh, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. You were the smelly hippie mom? Really? Really? Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> Linda's laughing. <laughs> They've never said that about me. <laughs> well, I'm waiting. Look oh, at me. No. Oh, snack no. time at the home. <laughs> Good at home. <laughs> snack time. What's She's really liking time? that home. <laughs> so it was a That's good choice, time. she said. It was a good choice. It mm -hmm. does look like that, too. <laughs> it does. It really does. <laughs> I, I, it does. I lost my pudding cup. <laughs> oh, you look she cozy. was so happy when we left her there. Yeah. She thought we were just going outside for a minute. She doesn't get many visitors. She didn't know we weren't coming back. No. Who took the picture because her phone is in her lap? <laughs> <clears throat> Did I take that picture? I don't you, know. Scooter? I don't know. <laughs> That's a beautiful I was picture. Standing over her while she was sitting in it. <laughs> you look very happy in that picture, Scooter, and very. Yes, yeah, you element. did help Dave pick a nice place, oh, Kevin. Lord, yeah, he said you gave him a lot of good suggestions. <laughs> 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 She's enjoying it there. Yes. You know, I did. I read an article in the New York Times. You're not going to believe this, and they said that um, in those assisted living and those places, there is a uh, there's a Mean Girls Club in there, and like if they have the people that are 95, the ones that are 80, like leave them out of stuff. Mm. And this one girl was saying, like, she goes, "I was my grandmother was there." She said, "She goes like." And it's like, what's going on? She goes, they don't let me play bridge with them or something. Like it's, it was like yeah. they were geriatric mean girls. I'm telling you, oh, they were no. saying they never grew out of it. And they said, no, oh, we have you. four for bridge. Sorry, bye. You know, That's go lousy. and they don't let them sit at the table. And they all have this like pecking order. And the younger you are, so like the 80 year olds look at the 90 year olds and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so old. And then they're they're really <laughs> mean to each other. They're, she was, yeah, you, it's this crazy thing. And she said. They're so mean, and they think like if they're eighty, they're the cats meow. Mm. Age you know? means nothing. Age means but, nothing. Well, they do in there. They really. We're seeing it all well, over I mean, YouTube, I mean, Carla. Right? The they're they're going crazy, and they, 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 
Women in their 70s. Well, I'm agreeing. Yeah, I'm saying crazy. that age means nothing. You can still be mean and, you know, and horrible like but, that. But it was funny. Age. She she did a whole thing on her grand uh, bringing her grandmother there and all, and she was telling her grandmother how to get in the bridge game. And oh, oh my gosh, your gram was one of those mean girls, Debbie. Oh, oh boy, in oh, the assisted no. living. I hope no one's mean to me Yikes. when I go in there. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared of that. You're now scared I, of the mean now. girls? Did you have mean yeah. girls in that nursing home you worked in, Scooter? Nicole, oh, I come yes, in and look after girl. you. There what? was Thank a you, lot Carol. of um, A lot I of mean girls? I'm dead. Oh, I have to come God, you yes. as a spirit. Mean yeah. to the other ladies? What? Mean to the other ladies? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, really? Oh, no. Yes. Yikes. Every nursing home was like that. Lisa Hoban said it's true that her cousin, cousin just, went, just in went in one because of dementia, and they are like that. Yeah, they must die miserable to be like that. Marion, I'm not yeah. going either. Yeah, you know, people My have said to me, like, so don't beautiful. they think like their time's coming? They better start being really nice. Yeah. No, they're not thinking that. Trust me, they're not. Okay, they die like that. They die in state of misery. You think they would be calm in their older years and loving, right. and you would think that. Mm. And it, I, I don't know. No, Some that's scary. Are, so it could be a cultural thing too. Like on yeah. the East Coast, there's Irish, there's Italian. But also, if they so get to see where they would group together in one of these. Yeah, homes. but also if they have dementia, that can make you very aggressive. Yeah. And it can make you very mean. People who have dementia, dementia and he's the loveliest person. So oh. who, has, who has? My uncle has dementia and he's the lovely, he was the loveliest man ever before he got oh. it. And he's still a beautiful man. So yeah. I just think that it's your personality. Carolyn, and whether you yeah, have it, it or not. Carolyn, it, it, has do, it has nothing to do with uh, dementia. It's, dementia, it's the ones that have their minds that are like that. Yeah, right. they have their minds, and the ones that have their minds are like that. That's my yeah. sister. Worked my older half sister worked in the dementia unit um, well, of a nursing home. They were home. probably yeah. narcissists to begin with. These women. yeah, exactly. They're in there bullying now, you know, bullying people all their lives. Yeah, and lying through their teeth as well. They do exactly. that in nursing homes. Yeah, but I was a conscience. People still, I mean, even older people, they can still have their minds and, you know, they use that in a very negative way, even in the nursing homes. And that's that's not a good way, you know, to spend your golden years with bullies like that. Lisa Hoban yeah. says mean is always mean. Yeah. Yeah. The clicks Absolutely. are palpable. Debbie says yeah. the clicks are palpable in there in her, her grandmother's home. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. And right, she said you could tell who the, the Irish women, the Jewish women, the Italian women. Her grand well, would steal things from other people's rooms. What? Yeah, they do, yes. Wow. She said you could tell who the cheerlead that who the cheerleaders were in high school, you know, from being in there. You could wow. tell. Wow. So oh, Jeanette, Jeanette, all it is is um a lot of these women are hateful, okay? And yeah. they will pick on the other women in there, and they'll all sit there and gossip about them, and they won't even hide it. Okay, they'll yeah. just like yell stuff out at them if they get close. They'll say, mm -hmm. "Don't you sit here? What are you sitting at my table for?" They get wow. real territorial. And yeah, that's like jail. That's what this lady was saying about her wow. grandmother's thing. Horror stories. How yeah. long were you? Uh, were, what What did you do in the nursing home? Um, I, to I started in the 1980s volunteering because mm -hmm. my mom uh, volunteered, you know, in the activities department. Oh, and I would wow. just visit people. And then I did, um, I worked then like in the kitchen. I worked in housekeeping. And then I went ahead and became an activities director. I went for training for that. Wow. Yeah, so... Um, so you have the experience and, oh, and I I, you, you know, know, thank you for sharing because, you know, some of us, it, it, it's going to come to that time where we do have to go into a nursing home. And Don't speak for yourself, please. Well, for me, I'm speaking for myself. You know, I'm speaking you for God, myself. I'm not going to put you in a home. Well, not put me this, in one. I did this but, thing in um, nursing homes where there's, um, there's a sporting event sort of once a year 
where the nursing homes compete against each other like the mini Olympics. Wow. <laughs> and so we had to go into the nursing homes beforehand to train them. And, and then on the actual day, we stayed, like, with our nursing home groups and helped them around the rotations. Um, oh. And some of the things were very basic, like um, just passing a ball in a circle around. Um, yeah. And even that could get quite violent. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was That's a certain dynamics like between different. a lot of them. But there was and this he, one man that, that everyone warned me about. Yeah, there's this one old guy and everyone warned me about him, like, well, be really careful, like, he's, because he's, um, he was synonymous for being, like, really violent. Right. And were these now the we, dementia unit? And were no, they, here's the thing, like, there was all you know? this, like, food on the table and cut up fruit and everything, and I took stuff over to oh, him so and good. was feeding him, and he was eating like he hasn't eaten in ages, mm -hmm. and I think he was just hungry, and he was the mm -hmm. nicest person. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, they're very interesting. Um, I think they sort of, I don't know. And that's just older, a regular. They, they get frustrated too because yeah. some of their minds are so still active and clear, but their bodies mm -hmm. aren't cooperating, and they just get frustrated. And, yeah. Um, and some of them who are still on the A game haven't got much tolerance for the ones who are. Um, not not as mentally um, sort of there, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, have a question. I have a lady that's asking a question and somebody's answering her. She says, my son, 29, got married in May. His wife is 25, was pregnant with their first child. Her parents insisted on the marriage and micromanaged the proposal, the baby's reveal, the bridal shower, and the wedding. The couple now oh, has boy. a beautiful baby. But my daughter-in-law chooses to stay at her parents' house with my son rather than move into the beautiful home he renovated for them. Granted, she had a difficult pregnancy, but she gave birth weeks ago and should be recovered by now. I've encouraged my son to move into their house. Should I say something to his mother-in-law about giving the couple some independence? She's clearly the enabler. All right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that the, the longer that the um, daughter-in-law stays there, the worse and the harder it's going to be to leave. Because I'm just gonna this is just a feeling I get that kind of mother is the kind of mother that's going to make the daughter feel inadequate and that she can't survive without her help. So yeah. she's not gonna. Um, it's gonna probably do more damage. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and this such is an important time too for the father to bond with their child and have those moments like um but i don't think um going to the mother-in-law is that's probably a bad idea because right. that will never not going to do it's going to be counterproductive she's just going to it's just alerting her to dig her heels in further mm -hmm. and the person that's, that's going to get suffered the most for that is the daughter-in-law like because she'll mm -hmm. Do you want to hear the She'll answer? Be made to feel the most inadequate, I guess. Yes, can we hear the answer, Carolyn? Yeah, yeah, it says, listen, you are a parent. Your reflexive concern is understandably for your son. I don't criticize you for that. What you're describing is a common dynamic in extended families, and from the limited perspective of your letter, it sounds as if your in-laws may be controlling. Mm. But... You are seriously minimizing the potential difficulties of the first weeks of a first-time mother, especially after a difficult pregnancy. And before you know how much your son is pitching in, it may be too much for your daughter-in-law to manage a new baby and resettle a renovated home right now. Mm -hmm. Or she may have postpartum depression. We don't know why she's at her parents' house or why you're blaming her mother for it. You don't mention how the new parents feel about the arrangement. I see little value in challenging your in-laws. It would be more productive to explore your son's feelings about the setup and encourage him to take on more responsibility if that's appropriate. You can also volunteer your help to offer to pay for a baby nurse at their home. I don't deny this is an unusual situation, but these are early days. Tread lightly as the young family gets on its feet. But I would also, um, if they move into their house, offer for the mother-in-law to come and stay with them 
so they can get established and in a routine in their own house. That would be my advice. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I would encourage them to, you know, get to their own house and, and sometimes you know, them out them have a hard time with the mother-in-law. Mm-mm. <laughs> sometimes children have a hard time going against what their parents want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd never, I'd never let my mother go into a nursing home, though. No way, Jose. Oh, okay. I've got another question now from somebody. My partner and I were invited to dinner by another couple. They wanted to show us their new apartment and said we'd order in food. We've cooked for them and they know how to cook. So I don't know why they were ordering in. When they sent us the menu, they included their Venmo account. I was shocked. We're all adults and we're gainfully employed. I sent money for our food, but I'm annoyed. Was there another way to handle this? And they said, other than calling them cheapskates, you mean? Kidding. I see no problem ordering in, but I would have expected the host to pay for the food, given your history of entertaining them. Still, they made their pay to play concept clear before the gathering. If the Venmo wrinkle upset you, you could have begged off dinner, but I'm glad you went forward with it. We're all a little weird about money, and we don't always know what our friends are going through. Think of it this way. One less dinner to reciprocate. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's another question. We just learned that our 13-year-old son has to go back to school a week early for soccer camp. I think he's responsible enough to stay in our apartment alone for a week while the rest of the family stays at my parents' beach house. My uh, no. wife adamantly disagrees. You? A 13-year-old? No way, not a 13-year-old. Yeah. How, how old is he? 13. How old? No. no way. Not a no way. way. Not Never. Well, I wouldn't even leave a 16-year-old on his own for a week. Never mind a 13-year-old. No. A soccer dad answered the question and said, I adamantly agree with your wife. I love the beach as much as the next person, but so many things could go wrong in a week that even a mature Absolutely. 13-year-old would be ill-equipped to handle. Great Don't answer. put him in that position. Does he have a friend on the team that he could stay with for a few days? He may be up for that. Your wife, too. Yes. Yeah, what about one of the parents go home? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, having had um children that played kind of elite um sport, like still do, um, I wouldn't have been as worried about like having parties or doing anything that he wouldn't shouldn't have been doing. Um, because when they've done those um camps and stuff before they come home, they're exhausted, and I usually end up rubbing like um like stuff into their like sore muscles and washing all their clothes and cooking for them and looking after for them. But there's a very big um, psychological factor that um, it's very stressful for them in those situations, um, some of those like camps and training squads, and they kind of need a parent, an adult there to, um, you know, sometimes it's like just to talk through stuff that they've been through in that day and, you know, keep yeah. them on the straight and narrow, like just um, mentally kind of healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also to drive them to and from um, there I as well. Day it is. I'm not leaving a 13. Yeah, the no, no, kid's 13. Okay, no way. No one's leaving That's the 13 day. year old. No, no, no one's now, leaving him. in the him. summer here, Not when my cousin was younger, his mother was a registered nurse, and my my uncle had his own business, and then my mother would stay up all summer with us, and so would all the other mothers on the. Uh, on the lake and so the the guy that was helping jimmy today that was his friend his mother was always up and that was next door to my cousin we were two houses down so his parents would let him stay up once he reached i don't know i think he was like 16. that's but fine he had to right. check in with my mother every day but there was mm-hmm. probably other moms cup, watching them, keep... like, so they weren't alone yeah, that's yeah, different. But there was somebody next door and it was also different. different yeah it was different that's back then different. but yeah it was he, different back yeah. then Anyway, yeah, but that's they, different altogether. Yeah, that's yeah they didn't fine. have the internet either. Imagine leaving a sixteen-year-old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. All yeah. that. Yeah, My I daughter even always Gabby wanted on. to be a teacher. She always knew it wasn't a lucrative field by a long shot. So before she enrolled in college, she got smart about loan forgiveness programs for teachers, and now her education's almost paid off. The problem: my brother is angry about this. His son incurred a lot of debt to pay for an expensive private college, but he dropped out after two years and hasn't landed on his feet. That's not my daughter's fault, but my brother complains constantly about the government's handout she's taking for her education. It really bothers me. Why is he doing this? 
And then somebody why says, is he do, Why is he doing what, Carla? Why is her brother saying that, oh, your daughter got the government handout and my he's son. sour grapes. He's and because he's jealous, that's why. Well, well that's what they jealous. said. It's probably a cocktail of jealousy and disappointment. It mm -hmm. Exactly. And he's if thinks we're honest, that he had to pay for it and she's not. <laughs> yeah, it said many of us know that flavor. Your daughter did nothing wrong in seeking out the loan forgiveness programs that are available to teachers and other public servants. It sounds as if she would handled her education wisely, but I can sympathize with your nephew too. For ages, we've told young people that the surest way to make something of themselves is a college degree, even if they have no idea what they want to do with it. The problem now is that floating through college can be wildly expensive. It may be smarter for some students to defer college until they have a clearer or affordable plan, still I feel compassion for young people saddled with egregious student debt. We can do better by them. Now let's see if we can help your brother manage his feelings without dragging your daughter into it. Try this. I feel for your son. Most kids don't know what they want to do at 18, and college costs a fortune now, but it's no reason to swipe at my daughter. She yeah. knew what she wanted and financed it sensibly. Lay off her, okay? Yeah. Okay, now here's buckle up. My ex-wife and I divorced a year ago. I have custody of our two-year-old son. When I take him to play groups or the children's library, I see the same crowd of parents and kids, including one mother who seems not to like me. The last time I saw her in the parking lot, she told me I was using the car seat wrong. But when I asked her to show me what the problem was, she said she was too busy. Should I talk to her? <laughs> And they say, no. too busy to keep a toddler no. safe? That's cold. Still, it rarely pays to chase after relative strangers to try to endear ourselves to them. Not everyone's going to like us. Just be polite to this woman when you see her and forget about her. My larger concern here is the safety of your son. If an accident, uh, improper use of a car seat can lead to serious injury or death, ask a friendlier parent if she could check your setup or watch an instructional video on YouTube. Don't be too hard on yourself about this, though. Every parent I know has struggled at some point to get those belts and anchors right. Yeah, every parent learns, and if you don't, go to a firehouse. Yeah, right. Google it. There's a video for everything on YouTube. Uh, just go right it's to a nice. firehouse. They'll do it in fire seconds. Fire. Yes. Oh, here's another one. My son is marrying his girlfriend next year. The wedding planner wants us to buy out a restaurant and have a rehearsal dinner for 150 people that will cost more than $20,000. I come from a poor background, but I've done well in life. I paid for my children's education. We own our own home and we live debt free. Spending so much on one dinner does not sit well with me. I asked no. for more information, but my son told me not to worry about it, just to have my checkbook ready. Uh -oh. I would prefer she, a smaller, on. less formal affair. Am I wrong? No, in she's not world? wrong. In what world? 20000 You could buy a car with that. That's you ridiculous. You could buy that's a down payment. On, I, on, I, didn't on hear the, I didn't hear what it was. What was it for? A rehearsal. For a rehearsal for, for, for a rehearsal for a wedding. For oh, How much does actual wedding cost? Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's a rehearsal. The person no. answers Isn't says 150 people mm. in the wedding. 150 I it was people just for the per... wedding party. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. It's I... so they said I'm not an expert in the wedding industri industry, but I have never heard of such a large rehearsal dinner. So you guys asked the right questions there. Less traditionally, invitees include only the immediate families of the bride and groom and members of the bridal party with a guest. And that's and occasionally, it. those who have traveled a great distance to the wedding. They don't. And that number possibly equal <laughs> 150. It's oh, also my traditional goodness. for the groom's family to pay for the rehearsal dinner, but it is also traditional that they do. But that doesn't mean writing a blank check to the wedding planner. Speak to yeah. your son now about the size and cost of the dinner you are willing to underwrite. If the couple prefers something larger or grander, they can pay for it themselves. Yeah, Debbie well, said only do what you are comfortable. Pay for, pay for, pay for I, the son's wedding. I never heard of that. Well, sometimes they do, but see, Debbie S. said only do what you are comfortable, and clearly she is not comfortable with that $20,000 rehearsal dinner. That's yeah, but what lot. happened to the good old days when people got engaged and they saved for their own wedding? What happened to those days? I don't know. That just seems excessive, and maybe the money isn't That's for scant. that. $20,000 for rehearsal dinner, yeah, seems yeah, crazy. crazy. Not right, because that's not typical, is it? I didn't have a wedding wedding like that. I went to the courthouse and got married. $20,000, I mean, that's crazy. Wouldn't they be better getting that as a down payment for a house or something? 
Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Rehearsals and, on and all that on just on seems so unnecessary. Yeah, for, yeah, for 150 people. What that's Daniel? not unheard no, like of. I, I, I said it just seems like excessive and unnecessary for a rehearsal dinner for to be that much. That's insane. Uh, I agree. Right. Like, Sharon, like, what, what are say? they, the Vanderbilt? <clears throat> uh, that's stupid. Sharon, yeah. did you say something, Sharon? No. Sharon's asleep. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. Awake. My niece had a really big wedding with that obviously my sister and brother-in-law paid for, but... Their rehearsal dinner was held at a club, and there were, I don't know, there might have been 150 people at this rehearsal dinner, and they had filet mignon and oh my all God. lobster, all this stuff. It's like, well, damn, you know, I couldn't go because I just had back surgery. Oh, no. Ago, but. Well, that, maybe it's. Well, you oh, know. That's, that, that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, and where, where's crazy. the fun in the real wedding if you're going to be doing a rehearsal for something? Right. right. Well, what have you got like to look forward to? You've done it all at the like rehearsal. 300,000. Okay, here's another one now. A colleague from three jobs ago is visiting my town next month. She wants to get together, and I don't. There's nothing wrong with her. I just don't care about her. I'm tempted to ignore her email, but I know wow. she'll follow up. I don't want to be rude, but I also don't want to travel for an hour after work to meet her, chit-chat for two hours, spend $40 on dinner, and travel home again. What would wow. you do? Oh, my God. Well, she wouldn't be a friend of mine if she was like that, I can tell you. <laughs> my God. So the answer I mean, just her was, poor, like, unsuspecting friend have any idea what she thinks about her. I know. They said, try not to make a federal case out of this. It was just <laughs> a friendly invitation. Respond with... I hope you have a great trip, but your travel dates don't work for me. The end. I was just going to say thanks, well, didn't I think? <laughs> yeah, I'd be glad to get rid of a so-called friend like that, I can tell you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's Good another one. Goodbye. I that had poor a girl, I'm probably looking forward to seeing her. Oh, yeah, probably. I had that's a miscarriage all, three weeks ago. My <laughs> husband and I are gutted. Still, I was mm. relieved, if you can call it that, that we lost the pregnancy early enough that very few people knew about it. Just my mother, my sister, and my best friend. I thought, at least we can grieve in private. But oh my boy. sister is telling people about my miscarriage, even posting about it on social media. Oh, she no. says she has the right to post whatever she wants, particularly oh, if the medical care I received <clears throat> may be threatened in some states. I am furious that she is broadcasting my tragedy. I want her That's to stop, but I don't mm. have the strength to fight with her now. What should I do? Wow. So, mommy. <laughs> and that's her sister. Yeah. What is wrong with people? I don't know. Well, this, this just is making it about her now. <laughs> so they said, I'm so sorry for your loss. What heartens me in your letter is that is your keen awareness that you and your husband need time to grieve. Be gentle with yourselves now. Too often we try to power through our tragedies and rush back to our daily lives. But your, si your, but your life and your sister will still be there when you're feeling better. And as for your sister, I can't fathom how she mm. rationalizes her cruel behavior. The yeah, story of your miscarriage I. is for you alone to tell and right. only if you want to tell it. There is nothing special about social media or political debate that gives her the right to violate your privacy this way. Let's hope we can help her see that. Normally, I would suggest talking to her, but it seems that you may not be ready for that yet. Deploy your mother or best friend or perhaps your husband instead, and they should yeah. tell her to delete her social media posts about your loss and to stop exploiting your tragedy. She should also know that she's jeopardizing her relationship with you. If you need more help, get back in touch with me, okay? They, they, they can't possibly have a relationship. I visualize your own brother or sister, and you say to, you tell them something as personal as that, and right. they, they wouldn't yeah. dream of doing that to you. They wouldn't dream of it. Yeah. And if they did, and you said, "Oh my God, say if his name was John," oh my God, please take that down. A, a decent human being would say, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry," and take it down immediately. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, oh my God, I okay, can't. Here's another one. I was a manager at a big box store for many years. At least once a month, a child who was riding in a shopping cart would stand up to reach something on a shelf, lose his balance, and fall out. Occasionally, the child suffered serious injuries. We were trained to ask parents to keep their children seated. 
My question is, when I am at the market and see children standing in carts, I want to say something to the parents, but I don't. I'm not sure how they will respond. Your thoughts? Mm, that's a dodgy one. <laughs> person said i would definitely say something most parents would probably prefer that their children remain seated in the carts but often lose the war of wills with them somewhere near the cereal aisle it may be extremely helpful to inform them about the dangers involved with making them without making them feel like unfit parents try something like this is none of my business but i worked at a store with shopping carts for years i've seen many serious injuries from kids standing up in them i thought you might want to know i expect most parents will thank you for your thoughtfulness yeah, yeah. put them in the back of the cart i'll listen to this one our next door neighbor in our <laughs> mm -hmm. building. i kind of did that similar thing but with um kids climbing trees and I just oh. said, um, when I saw them doing it, they sort of like hang upside down off them and that. Ooh, and that's when, not when that was sort of happening, um, there was a kid that actually died at um, the school. Ooh. And what? It, it was just, it wasn't like it was a high tree or anything. It was just the way he fell and snapped his neck. Like it was just oh the angle. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. So every, so it kind of affected me very personally because, um, yeah, and so every time I saw kids doing that, and then I just mentioned that to the parents because I um, sort of tell the kids, like, not to um, climb the tree and stuff, and if the parents, you know, were there, I'd just, like, mention it to it. And and not being, like, aggressive or attacking their parenting or what the kids can and can't do, I just sort of mentioned that quietly, you know, um, that I'd hate for that to happen mm. <laughs> again. Yeah. And it seemed to seem to work. So, yeah, a lot of kids though will climb the trees without the parents even knowing. Even if you warn them, I warn them not no. climb that tree. Said, the minute your back is turned, they'll tree. be up the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's what happened. The, the branch snapped. I think. Oh wow! My, my brother, brother was hanging my... upside down, and he fell. Um, the way uh, he fell. My yeah. great uncle Dude, fell seven? out of a tree. He fell out of a tree, and he um. Scooter says uh, many adults are killed each year by shopping carts. Scooter. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. They really? are. Yeah, they How are. How many kids, What's Scooter? Uh, no, adults. adults. She said adults. Really? Yeah. I yeah. Think I've, seen some, I've seen some drunk adults in doing things they shouldn't be. No, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> one time I was okay. at a party, and listen to this one. Okay? This okay. is the mother of... Let me go ahead. Well, I can't oh, hear you. You're not enunciating or being loud. <laughs> I thought you were done. No. Oh, go okay, ahead. go ahead. Can you talk no. louder, though? You it's are low. We can't Very hear low. You. It's hard That's to hear, hear you. Is this, is this better? Yeah, it's yeah. better. Yeah. That's better. Okay. Um, yeah. I. It's muffled again. It up, there are a certain amount every year killed by shopping carts, okay? Adults <laughs> being run over by them. Wow. Being pinned up. <laughs> You're such a liar. Oh, she said me scooter. You shouldn't have laughed. You, <laughs> you laughed. It doesn't even make sense. Oh, said, You're such a mess. I was like, there's no way. I, well, I wanted to hear what she had up her sleeve. Oh, no. She can. Or she gives else? it away when she laughs. I'm she did it away. It doesn't sound real, but it is. They'll get pinned up against. <laughs> oh my god! Scooter, come they, on. Get, they get pinned up against a wall and crushed. <laughs> right, right. That's very sad. You want to hear you a fun, you talk about something about falling out of a tree? Somebody said somebody fell out of a tree. But listen, I met, I was at a kindergarten party for one of Ethan's friends, and I met this lady, and I never met her before. And she said, I used to work at, and the person she said was a professional. I'm just going to say she was a an attorney. And I always knew her, okay, as she was the mother of um, my older kid's friends, okay? And then she got yeah. a divorce, and I don't know what happened. But this woman was telling me that she worked in her office. And I said, wow, I haven't seen her in a long time. And she goes, yeah. I said, how's she doing? She goes, well, you know, she just broke her back. And I said, she broke her back? How'd she do that? She said, 
Well, she fell out of a tree. I said she fell out of a tree. What was she doing in a tree? And she goes, drinking a lot now. I said, really? I said, oh my God. She said, yeah, she was, she was gone. And I, and somehow she got up in the tree and, and I, it just hit me so weird because I didn't know her like that kind of a person, but apparently she got divorced and she went a little crazy well, and, drink, drink and, make it and she was drinking and in the tree and fell out of the tree and broke her back. Oh my goodness. Terrible. But I remember somebody saying something like somebody fell out of a tree and you're like, how do you fall out of the tree? Like, that? okay. Yeah. But now there's a cuckoo clock. Our next door neighbors in our apartment hung a cuckoo clock on our common wall. The walls are thin, so we hear this clock chiming loud and clear every hour, day and night. It said, uh, my husband and I are having trouble sleeping because of the noise. It often wakes us up during the night. Is it fair to ask our neighbors to take down that clock? Should I speak to them or should I go directly to the landlord? Mr. So-and-so, take down that clock. Okay. Ask him to move it. That's all. Asking yeah. neighbors put, put to be quiet at side. night seems reasonable to me, as long as you have a good or neutral relationship <clears throat> with them. Head next door and calmly explain the problem. They're probably unaware of it. They may even be unaware of the manual lever on it, most cuckoo clocks that would silence the chiming. If the noise only bothers you at night, ask them to switch off the chimes in the evening. You may need to cons to remind them occasionally, but the... But that's the essence of closed quarters. If you don't want to hear the chimes at all, perhaps your neighbors can hang the clock elsewhere in the apartment. I would yeah. only go to the landlord if your neighbors, if your neighborly approach is rebuffed. Okay. Most people would be reasonable there. Yeah. Well, you could blast some really loud music every half, like every thirty minutes, like past, <laughs> um, at like during the night to wake them up. <laughs> I love the chimes on the clock. My nana used to have them all over the place years ago. It's just a lovely sound. Mm -hmm. I think we need a cuckoo clock um, sort of in the Zoom and stuff so that we're aware of like an hour's just passed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Kind of I let friends stay at my lake house. I let friends stay at my lake house for a long weekend while I was away. Uh -oh. I returned to six loads of dirty laundry. <laughs> Furniture moved all over the place and a pile of water toys in my shed without so much as a thank you note for letting them stay. I was upset and I let them know it. Not only did they fail to apologize, they criticized my reaction and questioned the amount of laundry they had actually left. I feel gaslit. These people are like family to me, but I'm not sure I can but forgive animals? them. Their response to my complaint was worse than the original inconsiderate behavior. What can I do? Ungrateful people. Well, that's a lot. Never last again off them to them. That. I caught <laughs> my last them again. Never again. You don't let them stay. It says, listen, I'm going to give you some advice that may be hard to take. Do nothing for now. Yeah. There's no questions your friends behave badly. Though you almost have to admire the audacity of quibbling over the amount of dirty laundry they left. It's upsetting when people deflect legitimate objections by policing tone. But let's look at something else you wrote. These people are like family to me. I don't take that lightly. So assuming your friends normally enrich your life, give them some time to recognize their mistake and circle back to you with a sincere apology. Many people can be defensive about criticism initially. You're writing to one of them then regret their bad behavior and squirrely responses. Now, some readers may prefer the seemingly strictness of Maya Angelou's familiar wisdom. When people show you who they are, believe yeah. them the first time. But who they are may be dear friends who need a minute to admit they're wrong. If you can't tolerate this delay, step back from them. Otherwise, give them two weeks, then gently raise the issue again. I, I wouldn't have said a word, but I just never would I'd let them stay there again. I, I wouldn't be able to, I'd be too embarrassed to say anything. They're gonna they're gonna apologize. But I'd never again let them stay there. I would yeah, they go, they're going to apologize, but that's right before they ask to stay there. <laughs> next time. If they can't see they did something wrong, there's something wrong with them. But that's taking no. real advantage. Imagine you stay in someone's then, place, yeah. you'd want to leave it spotless or the way you got it. Good night, Danielle. Danielle. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, listen to this one. Good night. Oh, Good, night. Good night. Good night. I went to a coffee shop to buy an iced coffee. While I was waiting for my drink, I saw a food service worker cough into her latex gloved hand and then continue making a sandwich. Ew. I was appalled and called out to her to what change gloves. Wait, she looked happened? at me. What? What happened? You should be listening. <laughs> it says, I went to a coffee shop to buy an iced coffee. When I was yeah. waiting for my drink, I saw a food service worker cough into her latex gloved hand and then continue oh. making a sandwich. I was appalled and called out to her to change her gloves. She looked at me blankly and then continued making the sandwich. I repeated my charge and the store manager mumbled that she hadn't coughed into her hand. I decided I made my point and left the shop. Was it my business to pursue Whoa. this matter? Yeah. I would have just, no, I would have just walked. I would would you? I, I would have just said to the man, it was absolutely disgusting. You won't see me again. Good luck and goodbye. I had that happen at a deli one time. I was getting meat pulled and she rubbed her nose with her oh, God. And, and then she continued to slice the meat and drag oh my God. To give it to me and I waited until she wasn't there and then I circled back to the deli and I said I can't I can't take this home I can't pay for this and I explained why and she says oh no problem we've had that problem before oh, wow. so oh yeah you know, Problem with um, those gloves are that the people can still cross contaminate. So when they've got those like little sandwich bars, and they pick up like you know like chicken and then like fish or something, like they should be changing the gloves every time. Yeah, because they're, otherwise they're cross contaminating um, the foods. Yeah, especially and, if they're making fresh rolls. They're putting yeah, and sometimes whole sometimes meat it's in and then they they're don't. putting something else in. Yeah. But sometimes it's better oh, when they don't wear gloves and they're washing their hands in between, like every time. It's actually cleaner. I was going through the drive through and you know, you pull up to pay where you get your food. Mm -hmm. Well, as I was pulling up, the girl that was working at the window had no gloves on and she was looking up and kind of smacked her hands in the air twice. And I said, I got to the window, I was like, Killing flies. <laughs> no. I said, what were you doing? She said, I killed a spider. I said, on your hand? She said, yeah, and was holding her hand out to take my card. I said, never mind. I don't want my food. And I left. Wow. Ooh. Really? Yes. Do you, I mean, she didn't wash her hands or nothing. Just did it and turned around ready to take my card. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she said, they said, I totally get your hygienic fantasy that food service workers will never touch their hands near their mouths or any surface with germs on it for hours at a stretch. The alternative is gross. I hope they try their best to change their gloves if they do, but you're only human, but they're only human. And the risk of getting illnesses like COVID from a sandwich prepared by a coughed on glove is relatively low. It's probably not productive, though, to shout accusations at workers from across the room. Next time, approach the worker or her supervisor directly and share your concern privately because it's also in our nature to protect ourselves from public humiliation and shaming. Yeah. Well, then if you don't if you don't want to do that, then you just make a phone call to the health um, authority and tell them what's going on, and then they'll have someone come in and. Um, I don't know. Like, Nobody made me the glove police. About it. Because I'm like such a germaphobe, and that just is my. Uh, I just walk away. I, I might say yeah. to the manager on the way out, "Listen to me, you know she needs a bit of hygiene uh, training or something." But uh, no thanks, you know. The booger thing, I wouldn't want to pay for it. I'm sorry if I saw it. I might I say it. when you start over. Yes, but I, I, I wouldn't. I, I would get a hang up and roll my eyes. I would just say, "Look, can you start over?" I know, but you know how people are crazy nowadays. But have like, you ever had a hand in the yard, Linda? You don't want to like cashiers? Because I remember once, my son and I, Michael, oh my gosh, I think this is when he was going for radiation and stuff, and we went to the store, and this, this lady was checking us out, but in the middle of the order, 
she started like wiping her nose. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it was really bad. And I was like, oh my gosh. I just kept saying, we already got like half. We were done. like, and I just, I was like, mental note to yourself. Don't use, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. I, I, we just got out and then I like I almost like it replayed in my head and now it's like so bad I'm like did that really happen like I can't believe it did that really happen I keep asking myself mm-hmm. you know what Is has it, you know what has a lot of disgusting germs on it it's actually like money Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah my mother, money oh my itself, gosh, yeah. my mother said money yeah. is the dirtiest thing, and my mother would go crazy if you touch your money. Yep. Oh my gosh, wash yes, your hands yeah. immediately. We always wash our hands after I'm touching not- money. I'm right. not a I love germaphobe, that. but I don't use cash at all. Just yeah, the, I know. I, know, I just yeah, don't. I, know, I, don't I don't use it hardly at all anymore. But, but you know, when we used yeah. to use it all the yeah. time, it's the dirtiest thing in the world. Especially I know it. And yeah. so, are, you, yeah. are you not all in the habit now of when you go in and out of a shop? I'm going go to hang up so I can go to even the after. Now. I okay. 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 Sanitize it all. All right. Bye bye. 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 We love you very much. Night. Night. There she goes. I work at a small nonprofit organization. I supervise a department for a few interns. One intern who recently started is socially awkward. He asks inappropriate questions and shares too much information. He Mm. asked if he could host a dinner and game night for members of our department at his home. I immediately said no. I think it's inappropriate. Though longer term employees have hosted dinners before. Was I right? Kind of, yeah. I mean... Says, I don't doubt you were trying to protect your team, but it's not inappropriate to invite colleagues to a party. Being socially awkward or new is not a crime, and there's probably no one in your organization with less clout than a summer intern. It would be exquisitely easy for anyone to refuse his invitation. Generally, I don't see supervisors as arbiters of what employees or interns do after hours, and practically there was little reason to pour cold water on the party plans. The only people who would have gone were those who wanted to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I guess. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I guess I didn't hear the question. I wasn't paying attention to the question. My mind was yeah, somewhere you gotta for pay a attention. I'm a 76-year-old <laughs> widow. For two years, I've been dating a man who's 12 years younger than I am. I look 10 years younger than my age. My boyfriend hmm. knows I'm older than he is, but he doesn't know by how much. I have never lied to him, but I refuse to discuss the matter. We are now talking about living together. I know I should tell him my age before he moves in, but I'm afraid it will end our relationship. I'm plagued with stress about this. What should I do? Uh, so she's why? lying by admission. Hmm. And so she's 76 in relationship, and he's 64. Trust is the biggest thing. Well, if, she, if she's afraid he leave her because of her age, it mustn't be a very secure relationship, seriously. Yeah, but because she shouldn't have lied. He wouldn't care what age she was. I think that, I think a relationship, the foundation of a relationship, a friendship starts with honesty and trust. And exactly. I think without that, it's not, it's not a um, viable relationship. And um, yeah, I mean, that so needs to, to be discussed out. right away. <laughs> and he sees her passport. Yeah, I think right. he tell, tell him before he moves in, because if he moves in and finds out, it's and he leaves that's going to be harder than before he moves in yeah exactly. yeah and if he leaves good riddance because right. he's holding that against her just because yeah, well, she's a few years older than him. yeah but she needed to be honest though like why is she's why, scared I mean, of losing him which is yeah you but know, if you're talking to him right carol but if you're talking to him long enough to discuss moving in with him then that's a little while right you would think that she would tell him how old she is right i don't know some people move pretty fast so i guess that's true too I've... debbie <laughs> she might only know in two weeks <laughs> yeah we don't know how long we need more oh, information. when we get to a certain I'm age to hear the... <laughs> time is running out I'm like... curious to hear the response okay here's the response if your boyfriend really cared about your age he would probably know it by now your refusal to tell him would not be the final word here so it's possible you're worried over mm-hmm. nothing it's also possible that the age gap and your insistence on keeping it secret may spook him. So far, I've been yeah. a big help, right? The bigger issue, as I see it, is your stress level. Better to tell him and let the chips fall where they may than constantly yeah. worry about something you can't change. He's going to find right. out eventually. Yeah. Um, he yeah. might be really yeah. happy about it, especially if she has a life insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe. You never know. <laughs> only if, <laughs> it be fun. only if he is the uh, only yeah, if the he's got his name on it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if he if he's cool, maybe he doesn't care. But I mean, like, why is she afraid to tell him if? Jesus, I couldn't hide something as big as that. No way. That's pretty big. Like, I can't lie about my age. And maybe don't flatter yourself. Maybe she does look her age. Maybe he already knows. Who knows? She she sounds very insecure, God love her, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, if she's afraid she's going to leave, Yeah. then she should tell him before he moves in. Absolutely, yeah. Debbie. He might not. I mean, she said, what did she say? She looks 10 years younger than her age, right? Mm. Yeah. But if oh, she's maybe. afraid he's going to leave, it also suggests that there's something niggling in her. She, like she's not as secure in the relationship as she should be. You know, to even mm-hmm. consider asking him to move in. You know, there's I something did, in the back did, of her mind thinking he's going to yeah, leave me if I tell her. So I don't know. I think there's more than that going on. Here's one that's a little worse. My wife and I have been married for eight <clears throat> years. We were in our 30s and have two children. I love her. She's my best friend. Unfortunately... I made a big mistake. I got drunk at a conference last month and I slept with another woman. Oh God. Oh, I God. swear, I swear it was a one-time thing and That's it meant not nothing good. to me. Uh, when I got home, I decided the right thing to do was to tell my wife about what happened. Apologize mm-hmm. and promise it would never happen again. So mm-hmm. I knew there might be some fallout, but I had no idea she would be so upset. Oh, how could you she has practically stopped talking to me and threatened to throw me out. I've apologized so many times. This is killing me. What more can I do? I'd have kicked him out as well. Well, sorry, no excuse. Drink nothing. No good looking I could give him props for being Can't honest. Yeah. yeah, and telling her because he could have kept it hidden. I will give him props for that. Mm. But. If there's no, the trust is even... gone. You could never trust him Hold up. anywhere he goes. Say, stay with him. I didn't say stay with him. But most men or or women that do that will not tell up front. They mm-hmm. will hide it. That's true. So I give him props for being honest. Yeah, I give him but props for same, that, Debbie. But at the same time. Can I finish, know. please? <laughs> but it, 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 I kind of get the impression the from the way you but read it was trust. that by saying sorry and apologizing, <laughs> everything should be okay Debbie now. Let Debbie finish, and then we'll go around the robin. So, robin. Well, that's if the called. trust is if the trust is completely broken, you can either separate and go to counseling to see if it can be fixed, or separate. Period. Okay. That's what I think. All right. And now, who wanted to go next? I say he wanted to tell her because deep down inside he wants out of the marriage. Is that what yep. you say, Sharon? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really? I would agree okay. with that. That's an interesting perspective. Okay. If he wanted to hold on to her, he'd have kept his mouth shut. Wow. Okay. Really? Well, yeah. of course he would. Okay. He's um, testing the waters for her. There's no trust there. I'd never again. He'd be out the door. Goodbye. Oh. We, we are like detectives in here. Like we, this is what we do. So, you so we need him more being information. being honest is he wants out of the marriage? Yeah, no. because he, but well, he obviously knows what she's like anyway. I mean, come on, when you're going out with someone, you know whether they're a jealous personality or not. You know what, no, you, think... know, you know what they're like. So he knows what she's like. And he's after but we don't know. Mm. But Carol, we need more information. We don't know how long they were together. I mean, yeah, this, no, people go married. Married. he's you're married. He's not paying attention. He said, eight we've been years. married for eight years. Eight We're in our 30s years. and have two that's children. That's not a jealous wife. That's a pissed off. Mm. I, 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 I missed ha- that I whole part. What, I know. What's happened? Mm. It happens often. Like, um, guys, they get tempted and the opportunity arises and they end up cheating. But it sounds like every every situation is, like, completely different. But I'm just going to generalize. In this situation, it sounds like, He's accidentally had a, an affair. Well, it wasn't accidentally, but he's been in a situation. He's had an affair, and he's regretted it badly, and it's the worst decision he's ever made, and he regrets it, and he wishes it didn't happen. And now he realises that, like, it probably would never happen ever again, and he realises, like, how much he loves his wife and how, you know, everything that he's got, he doesn't want to lose. Oh, However, right. he's not he's not thinking. He's not thinking about, like, he he's processed that in his head, and he's like... 
he knows that it's not going to happen, but she doesn't know that. Yeah, exactly. And he's not he's not sort of thinking from her point of view that you've just done the worst betrayal. Like you've betrayed my trust. You've been with another woman. She would be really, really hurt. She'd be devastated. And, and a simple he apology. Had his sorry. Yeah, even though he's like sort of dealt with it in his head and he knows himself like it's never going to happen again and it's the worst thing that ever happened. I wish it didn't happen. But she doesn't know that. Well, How do you know it won't happen? have to believe that. He drinks. Okay. How do you know it won't happen again? How does he know it won't <laughs> happen again? Well, he, so. Because he said that it's a worst um, decision he's ever made and and if she um if they stay together she can always use that um against him whenever she wants to get her own way <laughs> yeah there's that side as well no. all right here's the I'm, answer I'm now you want, do you guys want to hear the answer yes yeah, it'll be counseling we all screw up even the most judgy readers i know that you're suffering but you've caused suffering too and i think that you may have overestimated the nobility of confessing behavior that is not okay in your marriage. No gold stars for you. I hope your apologies to your wife have steered clear of excuses like drunkenness or yeah. maddening claims that your infidelity meant nothing when it clearly means a lot to her. If you need to rethink right. your apologies, do it now. You don't control what happens next, though. And yes, I know how scary that can be. Your wife may be heartbroken or furious or both. She may be considering what's best for her and the children and whether she can trust you again. If she's really your best friend, as you say, encourage her to take all the time she needs to make the best decisions. In promising news, she hasn't thrown you out yet. You can suggest talking to a counselor together about your marriage and this episode, if she's ready for that. You should definitely speak to a therapist on your own. Something went wrong here, and the more closely you examine it, the more productively you can address the problem. Yeah, that's I mean, some, some people can stay together and make it work, but very rarely. Yeah. Like, it's usually all downhill from there, because then you question everything that they do, and it just changes everything. Yeah, and if he ever it's goes out on his same. own again and he's drinking or anything, your nerves are always going to be at you. And if he's home late, you're going to be suspicious and stuff, you know? I don't know. It's not a business trip. Was it with a co-worker? Yes. They don't well, we need more yes. information. It was. You oh, guys didn't pay attention. It oh. said, listen. Sharon, I'm sorry. I got I'm drunk at a conference. <laughs> oh, no, it's not a co-worker. But I got drunk at a conference last month and slept with another woman. They didn't say who, though, if there was a co-worker. No, can't work. We don't know. I mean, me, per me personally, in that situation, it would be over. Mm. Oh, same here. Done. Me too. Eight, eight no, years I think I've been around for 20 dun, years. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, I it, would it, would, it would kill because... me. It would absolutely kill me, but I just couldn't trust ever again. It would be a good excuse. I'd be like, I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to start a new life on the, this tropical island over here. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, That's so it. here's another, here's well, another no, thing. No, no, the, the, wife, the wife was here's thinking. Here's another oh, answer. Was, Wait, here's another answer. Now I don't feel so okay. bad about Pablo the pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> you made two mistakes. Obviously, the first was your tryst. The second was telling her. Oh. Well, uh, both acts Lucy were said. enormously selfish. Telling her was not the right thing to do. I wow. guess you did it for yourself, perhaps to reduce your guilt. But yeah. how could you possibly think learning of this would benefit her or your relationship. Your yeah. selfishness continues. It's killing you. What about yeah. her? Your comment what about her? that you knew there would right. be a fallout is such a gross understatement. It would be funny if you hadn't hurt her so deeply. Only yeah. time and impeccable behavior can improve the situation. I doubt that the level of trust right. that characterized your relationship will ever be completely restored. You can't Absolutely. change what's happened, but what I have trouble getting my head around is why you absolutely had to tell her. Did you instead consider beating her with a baseball bat? It would have <sighs> hurt less. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that was very blunt to answer, I guess. Yeah. I'll be honest yeah. with you. And I'll be right here. I've been through it, and I would rather some, I'd rather them be 
upfront and honest than try to hide it because that's even sneakier and lying. That mm-hmm. makes it worse because then you're saying, well, what else are they being sneaky about? What else have they lied about? You're going to question everything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's going to make it worse versus can I trust because then they lie and hide it. You got all this other stuff with it. Oh, uh, yeah. Especially if you never found out, out, Debbie. If you never right. found out what you don't know, won't worry. Everything you. comes out. Everything does. Every, it all comes out. out sooner or later. And I'd rather it come out sooner than later. Mm-hmm. Well, I think yeah, it, would well, only, like it, it would only come out if he did it again. I mean, if he, not necessarily. We not don't know who the woman was, if it was a co worker, if he's going to do it again. I, was, I don't think that matters. You don't know who I was at the conference and one of his buddies could let it slip. Right, right. We don't know. It could have been a co-worker. It could have been a woman. It could have been the maid of the hotel. I'm pretty sure that second answer whoever wrote it. And, you know, he wouldn't have told her if he didn't want out. Yeah. 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 If he well, was he truly genuinely, if he, if he was genuinely devastated, that's true. I'd have badgered him for twenty years. I'd hate his guts. Find mm-hmm. a priest. I'd hate him. Mm-hmm. Okay, but he so wanted he out. Out. If he wants he out. He really wants out. Of time, you're in a dilemma, really. My ex cheated on me. Um, this is another answer to that question. My ex cheated on me almost twenty-eight years ago. We have four children, and I had to look out for them as well as myself. I told him to leave. He took another six months making excuses for missing dinner nightly and asked me to look at garage sales for furniture for his new place. At one point, my son asked me why I asked his daddy to leave. After the ex told four small children under nine that he didn't love me, he had a new girlfriend. My ex refused counseling. Maybe in time she will forgive you. If not, you've made your own bed. I'm still alone after all these years. Why would I trust anyone after my 18-year marriage to a jerk who cheated on our family? He texted my 35-year-old son last fall to apologize for missing all of his children's school programs and sports games since now he's attending all of his grandkids' events and missed his own kids' lives. You may face the same fate. My kids want little to do with their loser father. I don't feel sorry for him. Mm. I don't feel sorry for him at all. Neither do I. So while, while she was raising his kids, he was off gallivanting with the new bit of fluff. Oh, yeah. And, and now he's trying to be dad of the year by being a yeah. good grandfather. Tough yeah. luck, get lost. He, he, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Too little, too light. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Marriage is a bond of trust between two people, and this guy shattered it in one night of drunken exuberance. He broke his bond of trust, which he swore to uphold. Unfortunately, the statistics indicate that people who do this once will do it so again, and the anguish and distrust which it creates do not ever go away. I agree with your wife. She should <coughs> dump you, even with her ch- the children. Her concern is maintaining a family with both parents being trustworthy and her decision was not easily reached. Living together Mm -hmm. in the same household under these circumstances is extremely difficult at best and is usually extremely harmful to the children of the marriage. It's often said that one good parent, particularly a mother, is more than enough to raise healthy children, but the father must be held at least financially responsible. What is most important is the children. The father has created this mess, and it's now up to his wife to hold things together. I'm a man, and I believe this wholeheartedly. I would say the same if the situation was reversed. Infidelity yeah. is the pits, and total cowardice and self-indulgence. I would never yeah. want to be married to such a woman, nor would I let my children be exposed to this example of trailer trash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Earthbound Spirit gifted a membership, guys. Thank you, Earthbound. Thank you, Earthbound Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Earth. Thank you. It's very sweet. It is very sweet of her. Very nice. Well, I, th- I think at least if um, by the wife knowing the like the honesty and the truth, at least then she can make an informed decision and how she wants to proceed. Well, it's knowing. actually asked a, a very good question, though. What if the wife has no money to leave him? Or would I take his backside to court and get maintenance off him? He broke, he broke the marriage. He broke all the trust. 
it's the old Ann Landers question. Are you better off with him or without him? And that's what you got to figure out. Yep. Well, that okay, last one, definitely without, because when the, like, the father wasn't involved with the kids and was off the new person, it's like that tells you what kind of father he would have been. Yeah. Because if the kids mattered to him and he was a good father, he would have been involved with them um, despite not being with the mother. Well, it's sad so that I think the, that was if probably the wife has to stay for money. Sometimes in America, I, I have a friend um, who uh, had a girlfriend and children with this girlfriend and she was an addict and, and unfortunately she passed away and before she passed away the kids went into the system and he has been trying for years and years and years and it's 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 been a it's been hurdles um so i don't know i guess it's different everywhere mm. i don't know here's another question my parents partners no, excuse me. My partner's parents are in their 80s. They are healthy and live independently in another state. My partner wants to move them closer to us in case they need help in the future. The problem, we live in an expensive area and he can't afford to buy them a house. So he wants to convert our home into a duplex. But I don't want his parents living on top of us. They have no concept of privacy and worse, a difficult middle-aged daughter who is financially dependent on them and visits for long stretches of time. Should I offer to contribute financially to a house for his parents that's a bit farther away from us? I don't have an answer for that. I don't know. Put away I, I missed it because somebody turned a light on the back. <laughs> oh, they, she said that uh, her partner, uh, the partner's parents are 80 years old. They're in good health and everything, and they live on their own. But their her partner wants to move them closer because in case they need help later on, and he can't afford, they live in a very expensive area, can't afford to buy them their own house, but wants to convert their house into a duplex. But she doesn't want them living on top of her because they're, they don't, you know, have boundaries and they have a middle-aged daughter that's financially dependent on them that stays for long stretches of time. So she says, should she contribute financially so they can get them a house but farther from them? No. You got two people who are 80 and seem to be in decent health, okay? Mm -hmm. So wait until they get a little older their circumstances could change and there will mm -hmm. be one spouse most likely who is in better shape than the other spouse. Let them work it out. Don't, don't turn your house into a duplex. It's ridiculous. I, yeah, wouldn't, I, agree. Do, I wouldn't turn my house into a, de a duplex, but I probably would consider doing a house closer, but not on top of them. Yeah. Put away your Yeah, checkbook. I will hold my parents here. Just shoot me. Put away your but checkbook. It's an... Ask your Didn't partner you... to call off the contractor for now. Trust me. I've been the self-appointed savior of an older parent, too. I know your partner is acting out of love and fear because parents are old, not pieces of furniture to be carted from state to state. Your partner should begin this discussion by asking his parents what they would like if they were to need help. They might be part of a vibrant community of friends and neighbors who enrich their daily lives. They may prefer oh. to age in a place with appropriate help or in an assistant living facility nearby. Their difficult daughter might even be part of the eventual solution. After all of these options, avoid the drastic steps of remodeling homes or buying new mm -hmm. ones in a state where their son may be the only person they know. I don't minimize the practical or emotional complexities of aging, your partner's parents are lucky to have a loving son in their corner, and for all we know, they may want to move, at which point we can take up your concern. But respecting their autonomy has to be the core of this discussion. They've seen a thing or two in their 80-odd years. Let them lead the way for as long as they can. Yeah. And what about this troublesome daughter? That's his sister, obviously, is it? Right, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's well, a problem. Where does she fit into this? Why doesn't she move in with them in the park? <laughs> she's, she's financially <laughs> dependent. It's that she's financially dependent on them, Carol. Mm -hmm. Oh, for God's sake. So she's one, she's one of two, she's a, uh, you know, she wants, she's, you know, 
that she doesn't want to work, it seems. If she's financially dependent, she's not working. She doesn't have earned income, right? Yeah. So he she, sounds like a lovely son, though, doesn't he? Like, he's worried about them, like. I it, They can't move them closer because they said it was an expensive area. Yeah, but I feel so, sorry for him now because obviously him and his partner, he's worried about his mother and father. We've no idea how difficult the sister really is mm -hmm. and the toll it's having on them. There's so many he's variables. He's about them. Variables. He wants to keep an eye on them. So, so many I feel sorry for Carol. him now, you know. There's, there's so many variables too, you know. Yeah. We just don't know everything going on. He's it feels a good like lad, though, to even Yeah, he is. It feels like he's, he's amazing. He really is. All right. He had a good job. We, you know, he's just been doing so great. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to know the whole dynamics of the situation, yeah. really. If he's that desperate to, if he's that desperately worried about them. Okay. I feel one. sorry for his partner as well, because she's, you know, she mightn't want the responsibility. All right. I feel like I know these people. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. Tough call. Do, yeah. do you feel like you know them? Like they're, I don't know. It's a strange feeling I get from this story. Okay. Moving my so, on. My social circle <laughs> consists of nine women in our early 30s. Most of us have been close friends since high school. A few of the women follow vegetarian diets. The problem, we get together frequently. And when we do, it is quietly assumed that all or most of the food options will be vegetarian. Worse, the vegetarians rarely bring their own food to these dinners or express gratitude to the hosts for the all vegetarian options provided. I'm My husband carnivore. always brings food. And I am beginning to resent this. Is it really up to us to accommodate the vegetarians? No, because you don't cook it right anyway. Mm. We'll just we'll just bring our own food. We don't even need to be involved. We're not even upset. It is on you to provide them because you if know you're them hosting, they eat. But if, if you're hosting, hosting you know, well to eat. Yeah, I don't know. I would say if you're hosting, then you need to make things of you know for anybody. Yeah, See, yeah. I would never have ask some meat and just have you're... some vegetarian options. I would never right. see just me personally. I would just, I don't know. I'd just bring my own thing and be happy. I don't know. That's just I know. Me, I'd, ask, I'd ask the person. Like my, my son's daughter, she or partner, sorry. She's a celiac. Like, so if I was holding, you know, if I was doing dinner, I'd ask her, what can you eat? What can't you eat? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not that much extra trouble. Like, and if it's no. vegetarian, you're just buying loads of fruit and veg, aren't you? Or whatever. Yeah. yeah says, I think it's weird that you see a quiet conspiracy in the sensitivity of hosts. The venues at your friend's dinner parties are none of your business. And unless the dinners are potlucks, it would be strange for guests to bring their own food, as you seem mm -hmm. to want to ask the veg vegetarians alone to do, without calling in advance to ask. When it's your turn to host, exercise your prerogative. Prepare the carnivore's dish of your choice, ideally with salad and vegetables to sustain the vegetarians for one meal. I know divisiveness is in fashion these days, but let's draw the line at dinner parties, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> what answer? I guess, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was hosting, I would, yeah. I'd ask as well. I'd I say, wouldn't make a place. Would you prefer someone... fish or be? I mean, you do a selection anyway, wouldn't you? I would if I was hosting. You know? but if so, I feel like I wouldn't, for me personally, I would if somebody else was hosting and I was invited, I would have trouble speaking up for myself. So I would just like bring something just in case there was nothing there I could eat. That's what I would do. I don't know. Okay. I'm treating my family to a special vacation in Alaska. My grandson is 28 and his wife are unable to join us. They are expecting a baby soon. I'm sorry they can't come. But I was shocked when my grandson asked me for a cash gift equal to what wow. I would have spent for them to join us on the wow. trip. Wow. He suggested I Lover. donate the money to the baby's college fund. I am stunned. I was wow. happy to help them with wedding expenses and part of the down payment on their first home. But mm. I told him, this is not how life works. Was I wrong? No, mm -hmm. she was not. How no. did she kill him? Wow. They said, you know it's bad when I'm shocked, Popsy. I see two ways of reading your grandson's nervy request. 
He may be an, an entitled young man who has grown too comfortable counting your money as his. Yeah. Or exactly. As this require and this requires some compassion, freaked out by the pending responsibilities of parenthood, he might have made a silly mm. cash grab. In either event, you were right to refuse him. Your generous offer to spring for a family vacation does not oblige you to make comp compensatory payments to those who were unable to attend. I would have a follow-up conversation with your grandson to clear the air, and let's hope he sees the light. Tell him you'll be happy to help him with occasional expenses. If you plan to contribute to the baby's college fund, not that you have any duty to, let him know. More important, though, tell him he is not entitled to your money and your invitations do not include an option to collect their cash value instead. Let him know, too, that his behavior was hurtful and risked mm. making you feel like a walking ATM. Yeah. I've never I asked anyone. I can't get over the cheek of that. I just can't. I, I have never asked anyone for money in my life. Like, Same can you imagine here. somebody? I die of embarrassment. I would never ask, even even when I was struggling. I was just like, well, ever. I'll get through it. You know, I'm not going to ask. For me, that's yeah. just embarrassing for me it to ask. embarrassing. I would never do that. I mean, you'd be saying no to it if your if your grandmother was trying to give you money. Say no, no, no. We just yeah, no. no. I said no, no. And she, my grandmother, used to try to give my husband money and money, and she would say, "Mom's the word." She would say that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Several years ago, when my boyfriend was out of the country, his then wife withdrew half their savings from the bank and moved to another state in secret. They divorced and we met. Last year, his ex-wife decided to move back to our small city and bought a condo across the street oh my from God. my boyfriend's house. She mm. changed her mind, though, and sold it quickly. Last month, she bought another house on the street a bit farther away. She also initiates contact with my boyfriend. He and I have decided that I was going to move in with him this fall, but should we choose another neighborhood instead? Yes. Most maybe. definitely get yes. the a, a different town if possible. <laughs> yeah, a different state, maybe even. So I get your frustration, but in my experience, a wife fleeing in secret and feeling ambivalent about her return may be grappling with a really bad relationship. There's no evidence of wrongdoings on either side. The ex was probably entitled to half of their savings, and now she is free to come home. It's her neighborhood, too. And that is why my interest in the ex wife ends. The rest of the story is for you and your boyfriend to work out. If you're bothered mm. by his contact yep. with his ex-wife, tell him. He can speak to her about it. If you don't want to risk seeing her when you when you are coming and going from his house, tell him that too. It's perfectly reasonable for us to discuss the terms of our partner's relationships with their exes. Be straightforward about it. If you feel threatened by her proximity, though, examine that feeling. Is it mm. about the ex or is it about the faith in your boyfriend? You are probably going to bump into her occasionally, no matter where you live. The trick is to make it, making that okay between you and your partner. Yeah, but why, why is he having, why is he having contact with his ex-wife? Yeah, he shouldn't be. That's, that's weird. Not on. That's not on. Or ex-girlfriend. I, mean, I, I, I get, if I was the, the, the girlfriend, I'd be paranoid. Right, he's, he's talking <laughs> about her, he's interacting <laughs> with her, and she's moving, it up, moving in up the road. Sorry, I'm a bit of a jealous person. What, Sharon? I didn't hear you. There's children involved. It's possible, but that's, well, that's why. True. They didn't mm. mention children. I never yeah. thought of that, Sharon. That's a very well, good we don't know. There could be, even though it's not mentioned. Yeah, the girlfriend might have left that out. Yeah. That's a very good point, Sharon. Mm -hmm, I agree. Wow, well, it's point. late. I'm going to have okay. to end this out, and you guys can stay in Zoom. Good night, Why, everyone. I can't believe that. How did it get so late? We had but, fun. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. We'll see. Yeah, you please hit the like button. Please yeah. hit the like. Hit, hit the likes. like. And if hit you want to subscribe. Okay, bye. bye. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thanks for Good night, joining us. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks to the moms. Bye. bye. Take care. God bless. Deborah, I hope you come in.